Hey guys, it's Chase with csjoseph.life, doing another uh, March, well, another How to Type Famous People live stream. Uh, this is March 2020. Uh, thank you for joining. I think our uh, current um, challenge, um, I don't know if I actually caught it late. But yeah, March 2020, How to Type live stream, in case the sound cut me off the beating, not really sure about that. And uh Yes, uh, Railgun has decided to uh, dress me in a watermelon shirt. So I am Mr. Watermelons today. CS Watermelons. So, uh, yeah. Apparently, I just got a text from a team member that's like, holy shit, that shirt, right? Anyway, uh, tonight we're going to start with uh, Travis Scott, because uh, that is the, uh, uh, the monthly challenge that we have for people. We're going to be doing uh, Verifying Travis Scott. And then we're going to be getting into the rest, uh, which will be your guys' super chats. Um, how it works is you give me super chats and I type people for you. Highest super chat converted into US dollar is the one that I type. Uh, and besides, you know, you never know when the show is going to end. Average is 90 minutes to 120 minutes in that area. And it's like, hey, well, you know, if you guys super chat too little, uh, you know, you might not because there's people that have been dropping like $40 super chats every now and then and quite often. So I think like the last stream we made like almost 500 bucks off of. So just giving you guys an idea, like realize that, uh, you know, super chats have been pretty high. So if you lowball those super chats, well, you might end up like not being gotten to at all. So just be advised on that. And notice if for some reason ever we run out of super chats of some kind, well, guess what? I'll just go into the super chat channel on Discord and then basically um, see what the highest was, the last super chats it was. That way, so hey, you know, super chats technically could count definitely, but the bottom line is, is that, you know, hey, it could be like a thing um, that you could uh, end up giving money and then not getting anything in return at all because people are outbidding you basically. So be aware of that, like hashtag watch out. Um, so I'm gonna go over here into my thingy and I'm going to say super chats are open. And by the way, like Patreon is dope, uh, please do that. Uh, a word about Patreon, uh, this month, March 2020 is the month to get on the Patreon. The reason why is because uh, Patreon rubies will get to have the cutting edge and they always get the cutting edge. And this month's topic is uh, dating tips. And when I say dating tips, I mean, these tips are like actually good. Like you're actually gonna want to like do this. So if you guys wanna get in on dating tips, uh, Ruby conference uh, this month, then I suggest you guys upgrade to Ruby for at least this month and take advantage of that because I think everyone, uh, a pineapple shirt. And people are telling me I have dropped frames now. This is a little sad. Hopefully it uh, hangs in there guys uh, with the drop frames. Apparently I'm running uh, a lot of windows right now, so as like all those things. And also, if you guys wanna know who we've already typed, it's csjoseph.life forward slash famous. I'm gonna put the link into the uh, um, the thing here. HTTPS colon whack whack, csjoseph.life forward slash famous. And uh, if for some reason, actually I'm gonna add some dub dub dubs and then make it easier for you guys. But check that list out. That'll tell you like who like we've already done. So you have that and whatnot. So that's cool. Um, I don't think there's really any other announcements. Uh, gold lectures, we got uh, ISFJ and uh, ISFP minimum this month. Uh, they're gonna be coming out. And uh, and then we also, we have that Ruby conference about dating tips. Now would be the time to get in on that Ruby conference, check that out. Also, we just did ultimate messaging formula with the new type grid and all the companion materials. I've been hearing a lot of good things about ultimate messaging formula. A lot of people are saying it's helping them in their sales and marketing, but it's also helping them type themselves and type other people. Uh, and they love the worksheets and the worksheets make it easy and you really understand and it walks you through the entire process and it basically teaches you how to use the type grid on your own without necessarily watching hundreds of hours of CS Joseph screaming at you on the camera, right? So who knows? Also, this may be the last week I ever used the green screen, or at least green screen for a long time. I'm uh, redoing the studio. We're gonna have our paintings back. We're gonna have a board back. Different board though. And uh, I think uh, we're going to be uh, approaching things a little bit uh, different uh, with the board. 
Um, I'm also gonna be standing at an angle, I think, with the board to make it a little bit easier for people to use. So, and that's how we'll, uh, we'll get in there. So yeah, but awesome. Uh, Super Chats are coming in, that's awesome. But uh, we're gonna start with Travis Scott and then we're gonna get this show on the road starting now. So thank you for all, uh, for all joining us uh, tonight. Uh, let's see, Travis Scott, copy that link, put that down. <clears throat> Tell me if you guys can like actually hear uh, the Travis Scott video as it's coming in as I'm handling the volume here. Connection was interrupted. Of course it was. Hopefully. There we go. Welcome back to Highly Questionable, presented by Zion. Joining Highly us on the beach today is Travis Scott. Ace Town, his debut album, Rodeo, is out now. Let's get to know him a little bit. Can you guys hear that? Just fine. Let me know if you guys could hear this video. Travis, what can you tell us about your life uh, right before your music hit, where you were living couch to couch? How long were you living couch to couch? Um, I mean, I left college uh, like my sophomore or junior year college um so when i went to new york i stayed with my homie ashton in the wow that guy definitely has an extroverted function as his inferior function look at that external insecurity and when you have external insecurity like that well guess what you automatically qualify uh for being an introvert so like that's a that's a point for responding so mr travis uh travis scott that's nice Audio is great. Okay, good. Let me know. Uh, just keep me up with the audio. But guys, by the way, I just ordered like a new microphone and I'm probably going to replace all of my gear with it, maybe even including the Blue Yeti. And it should make the sound a lot crisper. So I'll need your guys' help to like determine that as well. So, but let's, uh, let's get the show on the road. Let's get back to it. New York. So it's about probably about like two years maybe like two and a half years. Um, once I left college, like on a journey from like school to like trying to put out a rap album, you know? Is it true that your parents were sending you money for college thinking you were still in college and you were actually already in New York, uh, you know, traveling toward a, a music <laughs> career? Yeah, um, my mom would send me like um, some money every like two weeks for books and um, like food and my rent. So I use that on like, straight gas and taxis or like plane tickets or whatever i was spending the money on like clothes whatever <laughs> then i got caught and then she just like cut me off <laughs> yeah how'd that conversation go like once she found out that you were taking her money and spending it on all this other stuff man she was just like what the <laughs> you crazy <laughs> wasting my money it's crazy <laughs> just like going ballistic man like she didn't talk to me for like a good three months it was but a, you knew you was, was wrong, though, right? You knew you was nah, wrong, though, right? I wasn't wrong, man. Because, you know, it's, see, it's wrong in a, in a sense, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong in a sense, maybe, okay? Like, okay, if you're going to be talking about, like, how, you know, like, that, there's no T-I-F-E in that statement at all. That is, you know, that's what he believes. That is a T-E-F-I statement which is basically bow and spear. Uh, that's a bow and spear approach. Um, we're also gonna be changing this up for all the new terminology that we have that was released recently with the uh, UMF. Um, but yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> keep going, don't stop, don't stop. I wanna see how it is. <laughs> but then, you know, to me, I felt like it was right just cause like, I knew what I was doing with the money. It wasn't like I was going out buying drugs. I was going out, well, I was going out like, you know, harming myself and going out spending. Oh, yeah, because I, you know, I'm not, you know, as long as I'm not harming, you know, whatever, I mean, I, I, you know, and I'm not harming myself, you know, it's okay, because, you know, it's where it's funny, where STPs, they'd be like, oh, as long as I'm not harming other people, it's okay. Well, as long as I'm not harming myself, that's okay. That's like an FISP approach. So, yeah, definitely another TEFI statement. Um, and then, uh, yeah, definitely pragmatic statement as well. He had another pragmatic statement earlier about uh, his mom, and he's also talking about money in a way in terms of what he's getting out of the situation and his own personal interest, which is an interest-based statement as well. So let's keep going. I it in on like stupid stuff. I was spending it on like things that was gonna get me to like the level of just where I'm at now. <laughs> 
the level of where I'm at now. Okay, thank you for that very extroverted thinking, you know, level statement. I, I really appreciate that. And then saying level now, okay, thank you very uh, Mr. Extroverted Sensing approach on that. Maybe I should like actually fix the microphone so you guys actually see what I'm doing here. How about that? My bad, guys. Cool. And then hopefully that uh, that takes. Um, so cool. Let's continue. So, so now, you're following uh, your dream. That's your defense. Yeah. Your defense is that you're Blah. following your. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's she saying now? Like honestly, how, how does she feel now? Oh man, she's a, you know she loves it, man. You know she comes to like almost every concert. Um, you know she works at the AT and T store um, where I grew up. Oh, she works on the AT and T store where I grew up. Constantly talking about everyone in terms of their achievements. How very T E of them. So mad kids just like come by. And just like say what's up to her, check on my mom. It's like mad kids come by, say what's up to her, check on my mom. You know, that's two SE statements in a row. So he's obviously a Wayfair. This guy's a Wayfair. He's also dressed like a Wayfair. So definitely Wayfair. Wayfair responding, which means you can only be an INTJ or an ISFP at this point. INTJ slash ISFP. And it's one or the other, basically. So let's keep going. Amazing. Has your mom said anything to you? Is she asking at all about you, uh, the pictures all over the place of you appearing to date Rihanna? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, she calls me about, like, all types of stuff she sees on TV, you know. Um, that's, that's, but not, that's not what I asked no, but, but does she think the Rihanna <laughs> thing is cool? Because the rest of us think that's really cool. Like, we're very happy for you. She is happy for yeah, you as we are about that. about that. Y'all are crazy, bro. <laughs> Y'all are wow. I mean, look, I mean, your mom, if she happy for you, we're happy for you. We want to be happy with you. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, if you're happy with it, you know, we want to be happy with it. Thank you, man. Okay, that's so, that's so FI. Okay, fair enough. This, uh, my camera thing is like really frustrating. For some reason, this little purple thing is getting in the way there. So let's, uh, let's see there. All right, cool. And uh, yeah, very, uh, very informative. I mean, he's just been super informative this entire time. So I'm gonna say informative, responding, control, pragmatic, interest-based, so automatically Travis Scott is an ISFP. And that is 1256 for the ISFP, awesome. All right, awesome, 1256. Gonna move on to the next one. Let's see what we have here in the Super Chat channel. All right, Super Chats from today. Ooh, we still have uh, we still have a twenty four ninety nine from last week, so let's keep that in mind. Um, and uh, we still have a fourteen ninety nine from last week as well. So, but it looks like we have twenty five Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky is it. This will be interesting. We could do some, do a, uh, do some Noam Chomsky. Awesome. Let's see where this takes us. Good old Noam Chomsky on propaganda. Noam Chomsky on dissent. Ooh, let's let's do that in nineteen eighty eight. Awesome. Noam Chomsky has been called many things. The most important intellectual alive. America's leading dissenter. Hundreds of thousands of troops. He's not like an intellectual. He looks like an academic. You know what I'm saying? Like Noam Chomsky. I'll be happy to get rid of this green screen finally. I'll just move on to uh, the old things. All right, cool. Noam Chomsky. And then we're going to get this going here um, for this. Noam Chomsky. Awesome. You know what, uh, I'll just get rid of as much of this as I can. Delete, 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 delete. We're gonna have a different visual aid on the back, so it's gonna like not take any time to do this. So good old Gnome, Gnome Chomsky. Cool. All right, let's get back into it. Troops uh, attacking South Vietnam and expanding the war to all of Indochina. Major war with hundreds of thousands of people slaughtered and uh, just one of the major wars of the century, in fact. Until that time, the peace movement was very limited. Uh, as late as mid-1966, here in Boston, which is a pretty liberal city, 
Uh, we had a hard time having public meetings because they would be broken up, often broken up by students. Uh, uh, and it, in fact, it wasn't really until late 1966, early 1967, and remember at that time we had, what was it, about 400,000 troops fighting in Vietnam that you got a large-scale protest movement going. Now, compare the 80s. Uh, when Ronald Reagan came into office, uh, one of the first things he did was lay the basis for his advisors. One of the first things they did was to... Compare the 80s, folks. You gotta compare, because we need to make TE comparisons at all times. Please. Lay the basis for uh, direct military intervention in Central America. Uh, the uh, white paper of February 1981 was a clear uh, 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 effort to test the waters to see if you could get the population to support direct dispatch of troops to uh, El Salvador and probable military intervention in Nicaragua. Well, the reaction, uh, now that, that's kind of comparable to, we might, that's roughly comparable to the situation that's a- He's not really talking outcomes, he's like more focused on the journey instead of the outcome, so I'm gonna have to put a point down for movement with how he's speaking direction. It's just coming out of him and it's not really very structured uh, in terms of like outcomes because he's not really focused on answering uh, the interviewer at within that specific point. Let's look at it. The media is quite straightforward. We're talking about the United States, but it's not very different elsewhere. The uh, the major there there are sectors, but the agenda setting media, the ones that sort of set the framework for everyone else, like the New York Times and the Washington Post and so on. These are major corporations, parts of even bigger conglomerates. Like other in corporate institutions, they have a product with, and a market. Uh, their market is advertisers, that is, other businesses. Their product is privileged, relatively privileged audiences, more or less. So they're, they're selling audiences to They're other selling privileged audience. These are big, business, big corporations selling privileged audiences to other corporations. Now the question is, what, would a ra what picture of the world would a rational person expect to come out of this structure? And then we draw some conclusions about what you'd expect, and then we check, and yes, that's the picture of the world that comes out. And is this anything more than the idea that basically the press is relatively right-wing, with some exceptions, because it's owned by big business, which is a truism, mm -hmm. is well known? Well, I would call the press relatively liberal. Here I agree with the right-wing critics. Uh, so especially the New York Times and the Washington Post, and f which are called, <clears throat> without a trace of irony, the New York Times is called the establishment left in, say, major foreign policy journals. And that's correct, but what's not recognized is that the role of the liberal intellectual establishment is to set very sharp bounds on how far you can go, this far and no further. Give me some examples of that. Well, let's take, say, the Vietnam War, the, probably the leading critic, and in fact one of the leading dissident intellectuals in the mainstream is Anthony Lewis of the New York Times. So what would, well, the, non the, criticism. What would the non propaganda model have told Americans about the Vietnam War it's at the same time? Same thing that the mainstream press was telling them about Afghanistan. The United States invaded South had first of all in the nineteen fifties. Hmm, interesting. Let's uh, let's do this one and then this one as well. Try to shake it up a little bit. Oh, looks like Brave is... Uh, uh, Mr. Chomsky, that impotence of voters, that angry impotence as you talk about, presumably you'd say that is what is responsible for the rise of Donald Trump, is it? It's pretty clear what uh, is responsible for the rise of the support for Trump and there's general agreement about it uh, if you take a there's general agreement about it very te statement uh, putting a affiliative in there as well simple look at uh, economic statistics the primary support for for Trump is coming from uh, mostly uh, white Primary support for Trump is coming from, you know, this uh, XYZ group as a result of looking at these statistics. That's very TE. Working class, poor uh, people who've been cast by the wayside during the neoliberal period. They've uh, lived through a generation of stagnation or decline. Uh, real male wages are about what they were in the 1960s. Uh, there has been, it's also been a decline in uh, 
functioning democracy, the uh, overwhelming evidence. There's also been a decline in uh, functional democracy, the overwhelming evidence. This is an affiliative statement. It's also another TE statement. He's also very responding. He's always staying on point. Uh, he's not really going outside of that. He's always, everything is saying is specific to that and people are coming to him for information. So I'm gonna put him at direct responding movement. So it uh, looks like we have ourselves a TEFI finisher who is affiliative and just off of that information alone, that would drop him as an ISTJ. Pop, like right there, straight up, just based on the information that we have. But uh, let's keep going, see if we can confirm that he's not an ISTJ. Reveals that the, uh, their, even their own elected representatives are barely reflect their interests and concerns. Uh, contempt for institutions. Barely reflect their interests and concerns. That's actually an NE statement talking about other people's interests as a result of that. He's also very concrete. He's not talking about what if statements. He's just talking about the past and droning on and on and on about the past. Uh, especially Congress has just uh, increased, skyrocketed. It's mm. down single digits often. Uh, these are people who, uh, meanwhile, there has, of course, been uh, wealth. Uh, wealth created. Uh, it's gone into very few hands, uh, primary, mostly into a fraction of the top one. Yeah, there's the wealth created, gone into very few hands. Uh, it's also very systematic as well. Um, so affiliative concrete systematic also says SJ. So yeah, guys, Noam Chomsky is an ISTJ, which would make sense. It'd make a lot of sense. And this man is not an intellectual. He is an academic, completely different. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, ISTJ at 2210. Uh, awesome. Moving on to the next one. Thank you all. Um, I don't think anyone's going to really challenge me on the fact that this guy is just really boring and, you know, he's not an INTJ uh, like what people would have, uh, would have said, etc. as a result. So, cool. Cool, awesome. Let's move into the next one. All right, so we did Noam Chomsky and we're gonna delete that one as well. Awesome. Uh, okay, so we got Alex Chilton at 50 bucks. So I think Alex Chilton is the, well, wait, hold on. We got uh, two thirties in there. So Crispin Glover at $60. It's nice if I like actually, you know, do math. So Crispin Glover is next. We're doing, doing Crispin Glover. Awesome. Let's do it. Crispin Glover. And moving into the next thing. My mouse is just like so hard to control right now. That, that Noam Chomsky, Crispin Glover interview. If I can't spell to save my life here. Uh, let's see here. Crispin Glover. Uh, so angry at Back to the Future producer. Um, first appearance. Explains bizarre Letterman experience. Um, Zemeckis is not mad at me. Let's wait for the block. I watched the Huffington Post interview you did. Oh, yeah. And I, it was the first time I realized, I think it's genius because uh, one of, quote unquote, your early Letterman appearances when Ruben was on Letterman uh, has become, or became, one of the earliest viral videos. <laughs> Bananas. Well, what I say, what I say is, is that I neither in in po popular media, I neither confirm nor deny that I was on the David Letterman show. But at the uh, which, of course, is funny. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but but, uh, but I I uh, when people, you know, if if I'm talking to somebody on the street or a friend or whatever, I talk about it in a very very different fashion. And so, if somebody asks about it at the at the shows, I talk about it in 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 a more offhanded fashion. But it's also because which I experienced on the Huffington. But it's also because okay, okay, Mister Mister Informative, and then also talking about your past experience, SI informative user person. Let's keep going. Post thing, the 
it's it's a little bit hard. It, this is I know we don't have a lot of time, but mm -hmm. the way once you question media, yeah, and propaganda, if you're working in a corporate situation, you'll get questioned back. Yeah. You'll get challenged. So like at the end of the interview, like I was supposed to be promoting the bagman, mm -hmm. and they, I mean, this it was an accident. I'm sure they didn't plan it, but the bagman clip didn't get shown mm -hmm. and then they ended up co coming up with like a quote of a book I'd never seen it before I, I rarely get thrown in an interview but I did get thrown by this where there's an actor I'd worked with like years ago in in a movie and I'd never seen this quote and they bought this quote up out of nowhere which was false it was something that somebody like embellished yes yeah, spooky ghost his nose is definitely the source of his power hands down good observation sir for I guess selling their book or something right and I thought what I'm trying to think, what is this? And I, I'm in the midst of an interview. And it, ha it had a negative connotation to it. It's like, why, why when I have this po these positive things? Yeah, he's definitely a movement. He's informative. He keeps initiating new points. So uh, informative initiating movements. He seems a starter type. S-I-N-E. Uh, and he's talking about like the social situation, his social response. So it looks like we're dealing with informative initiating movement. Uh, crusader type so it looks like we got ourselves a crusader and we're in between ESFJ and uh, ENTP possibly uh, possibly but let's let's keep going kind of want to uh, let's finish this interview. I think what I'm doing by questioning these things actually is positive why am I being like like bought a, some weird negative non sequitur out well it's because if you're if you're dealing with questioning something having to do with with corporate elements and you're in the midst of a corporate element it's it, the more corporate it becomes oh, people, they the start more defending likely, each other and, yeah, yeah yeah there's a group uh, thought process and that's part of how propaganda works people don't even know they're doing propaganda necessarily when they are but they also feel like well I'm getting paid by this person and if I've got this guy on my show who maybe that person says that guy's a jerk maybe it's better if I do something that's kind of a little bit a negative toward that he's talking about social pressure uh which is uh pretty cool it's also fe um and he's definitely systematic uh by far i could argue abstract or concrete but i can mostly leaning towards abstract for right now um but let's i, I really want to verify him between esfj or entp i want to make sure we get this one right that guy right so i've experienced that and it's a real thing way things uh, happen but i well, haven't experienced it here this has been great so good. i really appreciate it do you have a relationship with but I haven't experienced it here. This is great. I really appreciate it. It's an SI statement. David Letterman today? Uh, I'd like to go back on the show. I mean, I've but been you don't have three, any. I, he, I, I haven't seen him since the last time I was on this show, right. which was in the 90s. But I've been on the Okay, let's move on to the next uh, interview. Yes. And uh, and then interspliced a very small amount of footage of me from the original film in order to fool audiences into believing that I was in the, the movie. I Because of my lawsuit, there are rules in the Screen Actors Guild that make it so producers uh, can never do something like that again. I'm, I'm proud of the lawsuit. But oh, wow. the, re the reason I, 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 I bring it up is because... the. The reason that I didn't end up being in the film, it's it's more complex than this, but I I was asking questions the, there, the, that the, produ the producer's director didn't like. You know, I was a serious actor. I really want to say ENTP, guys, but the more I watch this, the more ESFJ just comes off to me. Like, I'm getting, like, so concrete, but hopefully we can get some more abstract as well. So when I started actually analyzing the screenplay, once we were involved in the project, I had questions about He could be ISFJ calling the transition, though, which makes it more come off like an SFJ. But uh, so let's, let's, let's be patient. And there was a different end. I won't go into t so many details about it, but but I had questions about it, and it, it did get changed. And I think there are other people that had questions because there are things in it that could, particularly in this day, day be thought of as, well, offensive. And and those changes happened. It had to do with money and what people were doing, the, the characters were doing with money. But I didn't stop with it. I, sa I said to Robert Zemeckis, I thought, it was it was not a good idea for our characters to have a monetary uh, reward because it basically makes the moral of the film be that money equals happiness, and uh, you know by having the uh, there, there were very it makes it makes the moral of the film be you know money equals happiness you know guys that's that's an affiliative statement it's pretty affiliative 
Let's see. I'm not seeing so much pragmatism, but let's keep going. Various things that we're doing it, but by having a son, the son character cheer by having a, a truck in in the garage. I, what I was arguing for was that it, that the characters should be in love, and that the the love should be the reward. And Zemeckis. Saying it's not fair is something crusader types say all the time. Crusaders care about uh, fairness, right? So you'll hear that from any of the four crusaders. Just got really mad at me when I, I said this, and uh, did, he, yeah. did he, he yell at you? Yeah, he yelled. Yeah, he was <laughs> wow. he he odd. Like it. It, it, it's kind of odd. Uh, uh, wow, discussing a film wow. that old at this point. Look at how polite he is. Like, I'm just not getting that pragmatic vibe. I mean, he hasn't dropped an F-bomb or anything like that. He's just super, super polite. Like, why, like, and very, like, you know, charming in that very natural way, you know? But but didn't you see at the end the characters, they were more in love, I, I think, especially it, it, yeah, that, your yeah, character that, and the wife. They right. did seem to be. But, the, but my argument is that part was good. I was right. all for it. But I think it pollutes it. Do you think uh, the money could have been a peripheral effect of the happiness that they had? I think it I think it pollutes it. You know, I, I think that it pollutes it, T I F E affiliative. It's sending the wrong message, affiliative. Uh, that they I think changed. it's a bad message. Really? I think, I... Oh, it's a bad message. It's a bad message. Since when has like an ENTP really cared that much about sending a bad message? Let's be awesome. let's be honest do i think it's a i think okay. because that's propaganda that that says to people go out and and borrow money for, ba for banks this is this is a big part of why the film was successful because bank the, the corporations knew that it had that moral element in it mm -hmm. maybe maybe i i would right. also argue i mean that's only because they knew that that was in there therefore they can feel comfortable in in funding it and and putting a lot of money in Thank you, Master Exploder. Thank you. Yes, compare this man to Aubrey Plaza or Jim Carrey. Come on, not an ENTP. I I just have to, I have to, I, I kind of have to agree with Master Exploder L14 on this. I'm not really seeing the ENTP. Let me get a different interview. I need something. Um, let's 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 do something a little different. Why is he so mad at the uh, Back to the Future producer? Let's go on this one. Yeah, worrying about his self worth. Thank you, Rubik's Cube. Thank you. In our, you don't have to audition. You get the role. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say I have the perfect autonomy. Uh, obviously. Gosh, look at that SE critic attire wearing a suit all the time. It'd be great to be able to just make a call and say, I want to do this and get paid yeah, huge sums right. of money. I'm not in that situation, but. I feel happy that I'm in a, and lucky that I'm in a situation that I'm able to do things that I'm interested right. in. Well, let me ask you a question. I mean, kind of uh, based off of all of that and something you just said that I really didn't know when, when he said that it came, that it, uh, the relationship with Zemeckis was made good again during Beowulf. I didn't know that. For me. Yeah. For you. For you. Yeah, and yeah. so the question, is because there are a lot of uh, reboots, there's been talk of Back to the Future being, and, some, and Zemeckis says no, some people said maybe it could happen because look at everything that's happening now today. Everything's being rebooted. Mm. Now because of the relationship, if they decided that there's a way for George McFly to come back mm. in the fourth movie, would you be interested in doing that or is that well, there, coming Well, there is, because of what happened with the second one, yeah. I, and... <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's it's very it's complicated. I I'm writing a book as well that will come out next year because I don't really like to talk about it in 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 media, and I never really I've there was one something one of the producers Bob Gale who just yeah he he lies about things. I mean, he really does, and I and I he lies about things, and it's and it's unfair and. I'm concrete and I'm super concrete and I'm super concrete, but it looks like I'm abstract because I have extroverted intuition childs and any child really makes me come off as abstract because it's so optimistic, even though I'm not abstract. I'm actually super concrete and actually slightly boring because, you know, LOL. So yeah, uh, there you guys have it. We uh, got uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Crispin here, uh, Glover and, uh, at ESFJ, calling it at 35 minutes and moving on to 
the next one. I, I just couldn't justify ENTP guys, especially some of my past mistakes that I've made uh, typing SFJs as NTPs. I just can't do that anymore. So, and quite frankly, I, I really like vol. I really go out of my way to verify Crusader types now because of that little hole. Because remember, guys, if you're going to mistype someone, you're more than likely to mistype somebody. Um, based on uh, people within your own quadra, it's harder for people to type their own quadra. So you have to be extra careful uh, with it um, because you're more likely to see the other sides of their mind that are kind of the sides of mind that you're looking for. So if you're, if you're typing someone who's a crusader, you're more than likely to see the wayfarer side. You see what I'm saying? Not the adjacent uh, crusader sides, etc. So let's... Uh, Let's move on here. Uh, Crispin Glover, and we're gonna delete Crispin Glover off our list. Delete, delete, delete. And uh, current, um, with, that's, with, what's all the high rollers, man? Add to Jerry Seinfeld. So Jerry Seinfeld is uh, $35 currently, but looks like Alex Chilton is still the highest at 50 bucks. So. We're gonna do Alex Chilton next. Awesome. Good old Alex Chilton. I don't even know who Alex Chilton is. Maybe I do, I don't know. But uh, yeah, Alex Chilton. We'll uh, check that out right now. Good. Um, all right, Alex Chilton interview. All right. Okay, uh, lots of musicians i guess um interview part one from 10 years ago alex of the box talks the letter um alex chilton 120 minutes uh, let's see here the letter on et um okay alex big star on npr alex chilton chris bell let's try to make sure we got some actual footage just in case of this guy. Why should I care? Documentary, uh, Columbia Live. There we go. Let's do, these are all tiny videos. Various theories as to how Big Star got together this time around. Um, we want to kind of set the record straight here. What exactly was behind this? Um, some people from a college radio station in America called me up and asked me if I'd be interested in doing a gig on a day uh, back last spring um, with just some people. They mentioned Paul Westerberg and uh, Mike Mills. and uh, They mentioned all these people because as extroverted sensing. Uh, fair enough. Let's keep going. Talk about other people's experiences. Some other people and said that also Jody, the drummer, would be there. And uh, asked if I'd be interested in coming around and playing some too, you know. And I said, well, yeah, you know, I don't have anything to do that day. And then, <laughs> then the next thing, everybody started asking me, saying, oh, what's this about a big star reunion? And I said, well, nothing. There's, there's no truth to that. And then after that, one of the, uh, one of the American BMG labels uh, called me up and said, well, you're having a big star reunion, huh? Well, here's all this money if, uh, if you'll let us record it. And I said, well, sure. <laughs> so that's how it happened. What was ostensibly this gig to be about, though? The Westerberg, Shelton, Mills, Jody thing? What, what was it to be billed as? Oh, just kind of fooling around. I don't know. I don't Jam, know. Jam sessions, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> all the <laughs> brother tunes. Exactly. <laughs> there wasn't any... any just fooling around. I don't know. Ha ha ha. That's a pragmatic statement. Uh, so SCNI, pragmatic. So we could only be an NTJ or uh, an SP at this point. Plan? No. They didn't talk about doing big star material or no. aria material or replacements? Not at all. Is that right? It's just an old blank slate. Yeah. How are we doing? He's got to do uh, A lot of bands getting together again these days. Not just these days, but the last decade or so. The Big Star reunion has been one of the more uh, celebrated affairs. It's been very favorably uh, received. How about on your part? Uh, you talked about the, the, sort of the financial uh, boost there being a major factor, but uh, d does your own uh, effect... Concern about cognitive transition. 
Ain't got time for a fast train. Lonely days are gone, I'm a going home. My baby sure will be a letter. Hey, I don't care how much money I gotta spend. Gotta get back to my baby again. Lonely day. Singer. And we'll cut this record. Though nobody really expected it. At first, and the producer came out and said, no, sing it really hard and kind of growl it like this. And he kind of demonstrated it for me, and I did it as best I could. When she wrote me a letter that she couldn't live without me no more. Some I was 50 and really fat, you know, or black. And, and uh, we had a, a hit record on a lot of black stations with that record because people thought we were black. He sang his little heart out. It wasn't really until I started overdubbing that I started listening to his voice. And, uh... Give me a ticket for an airplane. Ain't got time to take a fast train. It gives you a feeling of movement and stuff. I think a lot of people were in Vietnam at the time, too, and that was their, uh, their fondest dream was their ticket out and back home. It was the first gold record for producer Penn, who had the idea for the strings and horns and airplane sound effects. Oh, and one other touch he told us modestly. I had Alex say arrow. That's the name of the group. I thought it was horrible at the time, but you know, looking back on it, it's, got, it's kind of a good name. People remember it. Gosh, these qualities interviews are pretty low. I don't know. Patty girl, uh, so fine. I don't know. Have you got a copy of it? Yeah. Just come to Lord's Kansas. It's not that good though. I mean the quality. The <laughs> My quality is like get a Lord's Kansas. They'll hire me. You should. You should get in touch with them because it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, cool. Thanks. All right. Alex. No, it's for the radio station you trip you sign seven. Sure. Thanks, man. I'll turn on. The Duke of Earl came out great. Yeah. I love that song. Sure. I mean, that's he looks so S-I-N-E to me. Like, he just seems it. And he's like, people are kind of obligating him into, take, into signing their photographs in that situation. So I'm probably going to have to revise uh, from S-E-N-I to S-I-N-E. It kind of seems that way. He also probably seems a little informative, but let's keep going. That one works even when people don't know. <laughs> so do you want to do more Big Star shows? No. <laughs> do you want to do one more Big Star show? Can't think of one. <laughs> Would you mind signing? No. Thanks, man. No, you know, just very uh, T-I-F-E, just straight up T-I. No, yes, no. You keep buying them, I'll keep signing them. <laughs> None of these pens work. I have a, I have a better pen. It might work in it. felt Even an SI user can say, I want, because... Um, because if they're seeking out an experience of some kind, they could still say, I want that experience, basically. So you have to, you have to take the word I want with a grain of salt because the English language is very limited uh, in saying, um, you know, what you want. What are you desiring? Are you desiring an experience or are you desiring something because you have passion and you're trying to will it into existence, right? It's different. Right. you just got the T-Rex because I just got the No. Oh, I realize there's a microphone in your face. I didn't get it anyway. Would you mind trying it? Huh? Here, it didn't really come in on the front. I know what you mean. Yeah. Is that at TGI Fridays? Yes. Yeah. Thank you much. You want to pack? Thank you so yeah you want the pen like okay oh gosh another ne statement might not be the best uh way to use cognitive uh axes or armaments to uh 
Typhoon. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. This is a quick question from MTV here. Um, you know, the song at the beginning, uh, baby, you know, by my side as long as you know, don't need shrink, don't need, you know, doctor. Uh, what do you think about that uh, with turning it back on you personally? What about your group? Um, now that your group is by your side again, how does it feel? Is it bring back the same emotions back in the 70s era? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have anything to say. Nothing? Well, what about the sound? What about the uh, mix? And, uh, any future? I don't even want to think about it. Okay. Just a lot of... Gosh, look at that fear. He's so responding and uh, got an extroverted... Uh, uh, inferior function of some kind so he's, he's definitely like afraid in that regard fun today uh huh right okay thanks a lot very responding well are we looking at like an INP I don't know it's a good chance of that he's just so easily obligated he definitely looks like an SI user action for the, the music have, have much to do with it or were you looking for more of a Financial gain for this? Um, I don't know. I didn't really have any strong feelings about it one way or the other. I think if it had been proposed to me originally as uh, as doing this and without the, the record company offer, I probably would have said, no, nah, forget it. But, um, um, well, part of the deal with the record company was I said, you know, well, yeah, you know, sure, I'm interested in making some money, but. Uh, you know, if it doesn't turn out well, I want to, to you know, keep my options open to not use it. And after we'd Your rehearsed a time right. once with uh, with John and Ken, I knew that it was going to turn out pretty well. And then when we did the gig itself, I, I knew it would turn out pretty well. That's an SE and I well. statement as well. They mixed it down and it sounded fine. Um, you know, but I don't really have any strong feelings about it. You know, it's fun to do five or six times in a year to play these kind of gigs. I don't have any strong feelings about it. He said that twice. Those are TIFE statements as well. Uh, so, um, and he's pretty concrete, guys. He's like super concrete. He made an interest-based statement earlier as well uh, regarding like getting money from something here and there. Um, but uh, it's not... Uh, I don't know, you know, coming to Japan and, and playing and everything is really fun because the fans are all so crazy. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it has its rewards and, and it's it's kind of fun in a small way. Um, it's it's almost fun getting on stage and playing any kind of music anytime. Right? Just, just not the vindication factor, though, like after all these years, you know, it turns out you kind of, you know, I was right. Well, um... You know, we've had big fans for a long time. I mean, I first became aware that uh, that there was a real cult of fans around the band in, in the later 70s, I guess in 1977. So it was like late to the party and figuring out that other people valued him. Okay, that's an FE statement, but it's a low FE statement. He's got low FE. So, um, so we're looking at a Templar here, it looks like. Good chance of Templar. Um, not really seeing the Crusader, but uh, low chance of Templar. And if he is an SP, Templar SP responding, he'd automatically be an ISTP. So let's keep trying to see if we can uh, disprove that. But he's pretty direct. So. Evan. Um, so it's it's not like anything completely new for me. But um, but you know it's kind of fun playing the gigs anyway. Okay, okay. okay. Check the orient, right? It is. Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, new stuff. <laughs> SPC, is it disorienting or is it the same as playing anywhere else? Or? Um, well, you know, any stage is going to be the same. Because you guys remember when he's like standing there giving autographs to those people and how uncomfortable he was. And like he was, it was forcing him to go cognitive transition mode and he's just compensating with introverted sensing so it seems like he's got an introverted sensing shadow not an ego basically i would say given how super uncomfortable he was being in front of all those people because he's obviously an introvert and he's being forced to extrovert and it seemed like people were easily able to uh, obligate him and then he was making those i want statements at the same time which 
by the way, and SI user can say those, but it is more indicative of an NISE approach. So especially given this more quality interview, and it seems like there's less people interviewing him at this particular situation, which is making his introversion a little bit better instead of worse, right? So. Same, really, but but the fans are so much more enthusiastic, you know, and, and I mean... The fans are so much more enthusiastic. It's another ESC statement. It's another FE statement. Like, I can't... There's just overwhelming evidence that he's a Templar. I can't get beyond that. Um, and he's really direct, like super direct. He's not informative on really anything. He's just like, yes, no, as few words as possible. So yeah, very direct, and we've seen that this entire time, and he's very responding. So as a result, guys, I have no choice but to declare this man an ISTP. Unless I have some other evidence to say to the contrary, I'm and based on the three interviews we've looked at, it kind of seems ISTP uh, so far. I mean, if you disagree with me, I get it, but based on the information I have, I have no choice but to conclude ISTP at this point. So, which honestly makes me uncomfortable because... I wish there was just more footage for me to like know for absolutely sure. Um, so yeah, all right, that's at uh, 51 minutes. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, so, awesome. All right, good old Alex Chilton. All right. One of the reasons why I take long between doing the people's like I like to give the chat an opportunity to actually say something in response um, and thank you Mr. Helsky for saying it. it makes sense I appreciate that so Justin Bieber 3699 for Justin Bieber and then we have uh, okay so that's technically above Jerry Seinfeld so yeah um, all right we're uh, yeah, I'm not getting ISTP vibes. It's it's just really hard. But the thing is, is that, you know, sometimes you get those super shadow focused ISTPs that kind of behave like that. I mean, my former ISTP boss was that way. And he really just seems so similar because my ISTP boss, whenever you like put any spotlight on him or any importance, he just like freezes up. And it's because of Effie Inferior. It happens to certain ISTPs who prefer to be in their alcove of control with their ESTJ shadow instead of like, uh, necessarily um, going out of their way, uh, you know, to use their ENFJ teaching. This ISTP wasn't so much of a teacher. He seems more of like, um, um, you know, more of like a leader and being the one expected to lead the band. So he just seems so EDSTJ focused to me as near as I can, uh, um, you know, go for it. But yeah, he doesn't seem like it, but I get, I mean, like I said, the evidence I have is what I have. He is concrete. He is pragmatic. He's an SP. I can't get around that. Like the temperaments, the way they are, you know, and in terms of uh, he's definitely direct and responding. So he's a finisher type. So what am I, what else am I supposed to conclude? He's not really, he's not informative. He's, he says very little. He's not informing anyone of anything. He's more of like, why the hell do I have to do this? We did it actually a previous, um, we did a previous interview um, a long time ago. Remember Woody Harrelson? Woody Harrelson's an ISTP and he's literally behaving just like uh, Alex Chilton, just like him. He used the Woody Harrelson interview. And remember, Woody Harrelson, in order to get through the social anxiety of uh, doing, um, doing the interviews, he was either high or he was drunk. The only way he could get through interviews to get over his effie inferior is that he got smashed or he was like super high. He smoked a bunch of weed just before going into the interviews. He even publicly admitted this to like Ellen when he's on the Ellen DeGeneres show. So which is very, uh, which is very common. So, but anyway, um, Golden Strands, we've already done Travis Scott. Travis Scott is at the very beginning. So please uh, change uh, your super chat to a different uh, one, uh, please. And yeah, he was being melancholy. Thank you, Rubik's Cube. Thank you. Um, we just did uh, Travis Scott, and Travis Scott is an ISFP good sir. Uh, please change your vote. Um, I'd appreciate that. Anyway, Justin Bieber it is, and which is funny. I actually know a family member of Justin Bieber uh, personally, so this will this will get interesting. Justin Bieber uh, interview. Let's see where this goes. 
Uh, answers, burning questions. All right. Nervous, was nervous to commit to now wife Haley. Um, changes and being protective of Billie Eilish. All right. Um, okay. And, uh, okay. We're back and I want to play burning questions, but I need someone to play with. Luckily, we always have celebrities wandering around backstage. Please welcome my friend, Justin Bieber. I don't know what we're doing. They're so excited, Justin. They're, they don't care what you say. They don't care about this game. They just want to look at you. What are we doing? Here's, it's so fun. Yeah. All right, see these ridiculous buttons? Yeah. They're, they're here for no reason. But when I, when I ask you a question, you answer a question, and then for no reason at all, you hit that. Okay. It doesn't mean a thing. You don't get a point. You don't win anything. Just, 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 press, just press You it. just press it just for no reason. Okay. Here's the first question. You just turned 26. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I need a good hug. Oh, I love you. I love you, Thank you for having me again. Thank you for being here. Of course. Of course. So you just turned 26. It's very T I F E. That you got. I think my my wife did up my house really nicely, and she had a movie playing. It was like this really romantic night. It's not a big deal. I mean, it was pretty cool. That's a. <gasps> yeah. That's very cool. What do you um, mean she did up your house? Like like with balloons and and stuff, or did up your house? She basically like... got like a serious like wedding planner type style thing and like did it all in like candles it was like this gorgeous oh, like, like yeah she did all these things very se i'll keep looking for si but se seems like he's a templar guys big shock justin bieber being a templar or almost yeah pretty cool all right you recently had a mustache will it return uh, I, I, I hope so eventually, but right now I'm going to keep it clean because my wife, she's not really liking it. She didn't like it. She didn't like it. I, I knew it wasn't last. last. Yeah, because she's an SI user and, you know. <laughs> she didn't like it. No, she didn't like it. So there's no point of this. No, there's no point. You just like you having can, You button. can even do it before or during, uh, but it's, it's a button and people like I to guess. push buttons. Yeah, there's no point in this. It's another TI statement. Okay, fair enough. I'm just going to move on to a different interview. Let's see. That's Justin Bieber and his new series, docu-series on YouTube. And it really is good that That's is well. happening for you right Thank now. You. Um, so there's a, look at y'all all grown up there. But you, when you met, there's a, a, a part in the documentary where you meet her for the first time. Yeah. And uh, look how young, I mean, yeah. can you imagine, did, you ended up marrying that girl. I like, did, you yeah. met this girl at that age, and then you ended up marrying her. Right. Did you know Insane. that? I had no idea that I was going to marry her at that time. <laughs> no. But um, I'm glad it worked out. I had no idea I was going to marry her at that time. But hey, you know, I'm glad it worked out. going to put a point down for, uh, for concrete and direct, uh, Essie and I as well. Um, so because she's an amazing 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 person yeah yeah she seems like it she too. really is she's super precious and I, yeah i enjoy spending my life with her yeah and it's yeah. cute she's an amazing amazing person she's super precious i enjoy spending my life with her often things i would say about railgun let's be honest uh okay so yep definitely stay on the templar run let's keep going the last two or three years which have led up to this album there's been some really significant and she can let me know when I'm like, all right, you're looking depleted right now. And it's clear to anyone who hears this album, the two of you have found, you know, a really important bond. And this marriage is, has been a hugely important development in your life. It's been a re big reason of why I'm coming back and, be, and I'm successful at this. I mean, she's giving me substance to talk about. She's the person that I'm learning to... She's giving me substance to talk about. She's the person I'm learning to. It's just more T-I-F-E-S-E-N-I. Um, Love unconditionally. Um, start a family with, so. How unconditionally, you know, in there, like, gosh, she looks so, like, Effie inferior right now. She kind of know. I'd let her know prior to the tour when we were hanging a lot. I said, listen, I'm still really hurt. You know, I, I'm not in a place to, you know, be faithful and all this sort of stuff that I wanted to be, you know, but I just wasn't there yet. I took the time to like really build myself. 
I really took a deep dive in my faith. Those tough years is in a way, you were punishing yourself because you didn't have the answers, right? Mm -hmm. I think that I was just, yeah, living in this shame, living in all this sort of stuff of my past and I wasn't able to move on. Do you think the person that, the you of them, all the shame, my past, wasn't able to move on. Gosh, super melancholy mode, you know what I'm saying? Pretty responding, he's very movement, so he's definitely a finisher. And uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, so like we know Templar as well. So let's see here. Okay, so going. Was on a path of self-destruction. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I would have, for sure, 100%. Yeah, it would have been no bono. It was bad. I don't know if I'd be alive for sure. Super, super social anxiety, guys. Come on, like this F inferior is like just like bleh, all over the place. It was dark. So I'm very, very grateful to have influences in my life that have played a huge part in me seeing their relationship with Jesus and their relationship with their wives and their relationship with their kids and saying that's what I want. But I want to definitely tell my story so that if if that resonates to anybody that they can uh, hopefully learn Your from it. Intense therapy well, for me, session. You know, music comes from somewhere. Right. Maybe it comes from this youthful naivety and this desire to escape something. Uh -huh. And then you get out there in front of the world and then it comes. How awesome. Who gives you the creeps, Lazarus? The interviewer or the interviewee? <laughs> <laughs> I am at all times, you know, and like yeah. it's like taking a kid and putting a kid in a room full of nothing but sweets, right? And just saying, "I'll be back in two days." Exactly. I just want people to understand, like the psychology behind. I want people to understand. That's a very S E N I statement. Uh, and why I potentially could have problems in my life. So yeah, thank you for being here and helping me tell that story. When did you realize that it was time for you to reconnect with Haley? I just felt there was a lot of resolution um, in my life. I'd seen her at an event. I'd seen her with a baby, and uh, something just clicked, and it was like, wow. Saw her wow. with the baby. She's the one. She's were you nervous like, before you popped the question? I was. I mean, that's a big commitment. My parents were never married. I never got to see what that really looked like, so I'm like, can I even do this? Do I even know what it looks like to do this? But I just felt like God was saying, do I know what it looks like? That's very essay, like question, constant question. So ISTPs have similar struggles to this guy's, like, like straight up. Um, and uh, also talking about like how you know the parents and like whether or not they're you know if they were like you know can I do this? Am I able to contribute at the same time to this relationship, etc.? And then obviously you know from a, I haven't really seen very much pragmatic. I haven't really seen much affiliated either, so it's kind of hard to say. But yeah, like yeah, Justin Bieber is an ISTP guys, like straight up. So, straight up ISTP, a little bit different. Um, so, and yeah, uh, awesome. Okay, uh, so that is one hour and three minutes. ISTP, one hour, uh, three, 18. Okay, cool. And then moving on to the next one. Um, all right, yeah. Good old ISTP. Gotta gotta love the Beebs. I actually uh, played Eve online with uh, a family member of his. I think he was like, uh, I think it was someone's nephew that I played Eve online with, and they're telling me all the crazy stuff he was into and whatnot. And I was like, whoa. And that was like back even in the days of uh, Selena Gomez, you know. And then and then talking about like the trauma of the Haley situation and whatnot and. Uh, how it just kind of went downhill for him. It was a very uh, fascinating story when it was explained to me. So, but okay, uh, let's uh, let's delete the Biebs here. Um, so let's see here, Justin Bieber, there you go. Apparently that was uh, Jenner's uh, choice tonight. Of course it was, um, add the Justin Bieber. Yeah, you guys can pile on like Super Chats to choices. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got 35 for uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld is next. Jerry Seinfeld, and then the next top one looks like it's Diane Keaton. Uh, and then the next top one after that is Dita Von Tess. Uh, and then the next one after that is Penn Badgley. Um, so let's, uh, 
let's uh let's keep that in mind um so uh awesome so yeah let's do jerry seinfeld i'm very excited to do jerry seinfeld actually very excited to do jerry seinfeld um did you guys know that he like went on a date with like a 17 year old one time and brought her to like a red carpet party i mean that's kind of weird right <laughs> so uh yeah uh jerry seinfeld is a very interesting fellow so let's check it out jerry seinfeld awesome you think jerry's knee and tp huh all right cool let's uh that'd be cool uh knows he's funny and doesn't want your feedback what a joke um jerry seinfeld and david letterman um shames every older man for wearing jeans really okay Let's see it's been goes. more than 20 years now since Seinfeld left the air as the number one show on television. Residency before. So this place has kind of become your home for stand-up in yeah. New York City. You've done the residency before. Mm -hmm. Coming back to do it again. Mm -hmm. What brings you back here again and again? It's that baseball glove that just, you can't beat it. You know, you have, you have a few gloves in your life. And, but there's that one that's just the perfect you have a few gloves in your life, but there's just that one that's just the perfect. I mean, come on, abstract. Love that. And it's just the baseball glove you can't fit. You know, it's very SI, remembering uh, remembering what it felt like to have that metaphysical baseball glove that doesn't exist, right? It fit, and the sound when the ball hits the glove, and that's your glove. And this, this house is my baseball glove. So what do you do to prepare? This house is my baseball. For a like, super informative. Thank you, Mr. Seinfeld. Residency different than one-off stand-up gig? Is there something you do different? I don't really do anything different except that I just feel different. And, you know, I know who I'm talking to. Right. You know, I'm talking to New Yorkers. Right. So when I talk about how annoying is it to be constantly recommended restaurants by people <laughs> and how they push you 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 have to go right. to this restaurant it's like okay you know right. or the street cleaner you know what what is that guy doing are they cleaning are they really cleaning the street <laughs> he's just kind of moving the trash around yeah. from what i can tell yeah spinning kind of it with the trail the of water <laughs> out the back and are they just laughing in there? Watch out. We're, gonna, we're cleaning up. So you're driving or you're... August uh, Tabrizi, you might be correct. Uh, it's possible that he is an INFJ, um, but I didn't see him talking so much about what ifs, but that, that is definitely a possibility uh, for that. I may, I may uh, verify Justin Bieber with a little bit more after this. You're walking down Broadway. You see the street sweeper. Mm hmm you have that instinct that there's something weird go, about that street stupid. sweeper. Yeah. You say, that's stupid. Yeah. So what do you do? You go write it down and say, maybe this I like to in? play with it on a pad. Okay, right, the I yellow like, pads. Yeah, I yeah. love my yellow pads, and I find that to be, that's, that's kind of like my steam room, or, you know. <laughs> I just like to just think of, well, what's funny about it, you know. Right. Most comedians do not do that, as in my experience of talking to them. They like to work it out on stage. I like to have both. I like mm. to have a little architecture. I like to have both. I like to have a little architecture. I like to have this. Okay, talk about his own experience versus other people's preferences. He's not talking about his achievements, his TIFE for sure. So it looks like he's a crusader type. Um, he has also initiated uh, a few points as well. Seems movement. He might be an ENTP. This will be interesting. And then I like to play with it on stage. And then here's the other big secret of comedy. The audience writes most of it. You kind of give them what you think is funny, and they grade your work second to second. We're talking about where you test drive your material. Mm -hmm. You've talked about your audience at home mm -hmm. being pretty brutal mm -hmm. because they're funny. Your kids are funny. Yeah. I know your wife is funny. Do yeah. you test drive yes. some of that around the apartment uh, material-wise? Sometimes. Yeah. I do sometimes. But they are so brutal <laughs> that I have to say, do you think this is funny? Because if I just do it, like with normal people, you will just kind of drop it in a conversation and see if it gets anything. Right. But with my family, you got to announce, I'm, I, I'd like to try a joke out. Because if... 
<laughs> I'd like to try a joke out. <laughs> My goodness. If I don't, you're liable to get, which is far worse than, it's, it's bad enough people don't laugh, but they'll go, you feel funny now, Dad? Oh. Ooh. You feel like you're being funny now? Which is just a <laughs> gut punch. You know, it's just, they really will gut you. I'm born in Brooklyn. That's uh, my home borough. And then my parents moved out to... Funny. Sometime in yeah. Massapequa. Yeah, sure. Was it your mom or your dad? No, I was never funny around them. But my friends... Gotta love him dressing, uh, dressing for comfort. Because I think he's what Jerry's wearing is just ugly. It's just bothering me. Very T-I-F-E. It's definitely... He's a crusader, guys. Like, it's, it's pretty... Pretty uh, there, and we know he's abstract. Uh, so he is talking about his system, about how the audience grades his uh, his, um, and also the system is home with terms of his comedy. So it seems like uh, he's abstract and systematic, which would place him as an NT type for sure. Uh, and form of initiating movement would basically mean he is an ENTP, as near as we can tell. So let's continue on doing that. But I I said to the guy, I said, this stuff I've been doing tonight, do you think you could think of things like this? <laughs> and he says, oh, my goodness, God, no way in the world. I go, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> You're listening. You think you could do this? He's like, oh, no, no. Well, that's what I was thinking. Very T.E. critic. It's T.I.F.E. statement. Pretty simple. Let's keep going. Listening to What a Joke. With Tom Papa and Fortune. We, Jerry's like, we, we're yeah, not I've been watching going watching Howard Stern. We're not far. I don't watch. Yeah. Anybody's got the headphones, they go, How come you can go on Jimmy Fallon without headphones? <laughs> but Howard Stern was radio from nineteen twenty eight. We need headphones. Yeah. Explain. I mean, maybe you have some producer telling you stuff. Yeah. We're no break. Well, hey, we gotta go, go to now break. That, now. You've that was a pragmatic statement. He was making fun of them for having their headphones on and why is that relevant and very calling it out for being very uh arbitrary and while they're all being affiliated that, but I'm not I, wearing them. I can hear you better without headphones yeah it's kind of weird can. right <laughs> yeah i <laughs> said to fortune i said i'll tell you exactly what's going to happen jerry's going to come in he's going to tell you everything you're doing wrong <laughs> <laughs> can you fix our show <laughs> and he's going to be right Ditch the and he's going to be right yeah. I, well my it helps for my hair i already look more beautiful every comic you ever see whenever they have video of some comic doing some radio show yeah every uh, <laughs> what are we in space? <laughs> it's radio. And it's not like you're far from us. I can no, literally reach out and touch you. <laughs> what are we in space? Another abstraction, which is pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm very convinced Jerry Seinfeld is an ENTP at one minute uh, or at one hour uh, 12. Jerry Seinfeld, which is cool. Got another ENTP in there. Uh, and uh, 12... Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next one. Um, so, see who's next on the list here okay so Jerry Seinfeld to be deleted got good old Jerry Seinfeld um, and where's the other Jerry just like a, there was another one come on where's the where's the other there it is thank you the other Jerry hey Jerry all right so what do we got now? Uh, let's see. Adding from my crest from last month. Okay. Um, I don't think you could do requests from last month, guys. Like, no, no, no. Like, you can stack them for, like, the current day stuff. Like, last Super Chats count, like, in terms of, like, what the numbers are and if there's nothing else to that point. But we'll see what we can do. Um, okay, so... Um, I don't know if previous Super Chats count by Super Chat is so Dylan Matheson. I thought we did Dylan Matheson, actually. Could have sworn we've already done that one. Someone check csjoseph.life forward slash famous if that's the case. Um, so, all right. Uh, 
So I also thought we did Brett Gelman already. Could have sworn that was the case. But uh, okay, so I guess the next one just happens to be Diane Keaton for the next one. So fair enough. Um, okay. Let's see, giant, okay, cool. Diane Keaton. Keaton, full interview. It's about being a fashion influencer on Instagram. Uh, revisiting her family's journey through life. Uh, Diane Keaton's could be a sugar mama. It's rather a new memoir. Yes, tonight is such a wonderful person and talent. Woody Allen flew what? to Los Angeles just to pay tribute to her this week. She is an Oscar and Golden. I, I, you know, I, I have something. I want to. I want to ask you a couple questions. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. I just want to ask you a few questions. Okay. This is just very important for me. Okay. <laughs> You've written questions. I did. I did. Okay. So I, here's here's what I want to know. Okay. Is is Matt Damon going to be on the show tonight? <laughs> I'm making good effort to work him into the show. Okay, is he, gonna, is he gonna come tonight, though? It, he is backstage waiting. Yeah, he is. And if we have time for him. I didn't see him. Oh, you didn't see him? Well, no, I didn't see him back He's there. not in the same area with the real celebrities. He's in a <laughs> special containment cell, if you will. Oh, yeah. I see. A special containment cell, okay. Uh, not Men do idea. injections. <laughs> they do. I'm looking at several right here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you bring him on, babe. <laughs> Whoa. I'm like five six. If it's if you're saying Rubik's Cube on open possibility, I I was only getting concrete from him. I didn't see anything abstract from Justin Bieber at all. No, I'm not tall. So I was watching interviews with you yesterday and you're drinking wine in all of them and I'm like, oh Yes, God. I love you even more. more. Woman. <laughs> yeah, I know. Unacceptable. <laughs> with, with ice cubes. Red yeah, I love ice cubes. In red wine. Doesn't yeah, no, I... white. I don't drink red anymore. Okay. I'm only white. Okay. I've switched. <laughs> but I love it. This is good though. When I watched this movie, it kind of made me it's so emotional. I thought it was so fun to watch at the same time. But but you know, in the past I looked at life in that in that way. I Not always. Tried. I think sometimes I I I was sort of self conscious, you know, growing up. Uh, but, but, you know, in the past, like I'd say 30 years, yeah, I've lived it because I'm lucky and I know I'm fortunate. And so I'm going to enjoy as much of it as I can and also try to give back something too. But you always seem so... Stephen Graham is ENTJ. Confident in yourself. Well. Confident? Yes. You're talking to me. I am. You got me confused with somebody else? No. <laughs> you come off as like this... Yeah, like, wow, super... Uh, SE there, Diane Keaton. Thank you, I guess. Let's give you some red. So, Diane Keaton. Let's see. And let's keep going. It's a really confident woman. But the way you dress, is, your dress is amazing. And oh, then... I love, though, but I love style and fashion. I do. I love it. Do you? Yes, I follow oh you on Instagram. Oh, I love it. Do you love it too? Okay, very S-E again, and probably F-I-T-E. Oh my goodness. Instagram, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, it's so much fun. I love it. It's fun of, getting your outfit on. You, yeah, you did. You know, you know, it's 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 visual. It's a great. It's kind of it's, a, it's an art piece. You know what you're wearing. I, that's the way I feel about it. It's such a great thing to do. <laughs> It is. Yeah. I and especially it. like when you when you can you like the fashion influencer now I saw, which is but great. it just happened out of nowhere. You know, just because I posted something. I mean I couldn't believe it. One morning I thought I'm gonna post this all oh, what's the difference on this is what I'm wearing today. Isn't that interesting how life is like I say, like in this movie, you don't know what's gonna happen really. You make some choices and that choice leads you to something that you hadn't expected. It's not always Railgun just uh, walked into the studio here uh, wearing her wedding dress. <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you guys, she is uh, smoking hot in that thing. 
Such a beautiful woman. My goodness. Let's continue. <laughs> Good. Sometimes it's, you know, riddled with problems. but I just love just my wife. Know. She's It makes amazing. life exciting. It do you does. feel that? I do. Best woman yeah. ever met. And the, the women were talking about how you came to set it. She's like, keeps initiating over and over and it's making the other person uncomfortable. <laughs> she keeps initiating. That's so funny. It kind of seems like very uh, control. And she's like using the SE mirror at the same time. Like, my goodness. It's like, wow. All right, is this an ENTJ we're looking at here? Come on. Uh, I need more. But wears black and white and drinks red wine all over. Our first guest. Oh, I Eilish. I'm sorry. I don't speak English. So, <laughs> Billie Eilish, I mean, I cannot tell you. Uh, you know, I grew up in Highland Park, where she lives. <laughs> Can you believe that? I grew up in Highland Park. Where she lives. Nice little S.E. totem there, Diane Keaton. Thank you very much. And her brother and she, they live in Highland Park. Yes, yes. I guess it doesn't mean much to you. Not really. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought I'd share that. But well, no, it's good that you shared it. Maybe I'll move along on to something else. Okay. okay. No, I mean, what, what kind of reaction would you have wanted from that? Let me give you the... From Billie Eilish? No, let me just give you the sentence I'd and like then you respond her. the way... I'm okay. supposed to respond? I grew up in yes. uh, Highland Park and yes. that's where Billie Eilish and her brother live. Yes. Did I do that wrong? <laughs> That's the way they reacted. I was giving I you a I, I was giving you a chance to react the way you thought we should have reacted. Oh, oh yeah, can you okay, give I'll me do it again. Chance? Yeah. I grew up in Highland Park and that's where Billie Eilish and her brother live in Highland Park. But I don't really care about you. <laughs> okay. A little pragmatic on that one for sure. And uh, also uh, name dropping for TE as well. Gosh, I wish she'd like talk more, but she's like so great. Well, that's what they did. You sh he was so great that Wasn't night. Wasn't he great? He was <laughs> oh, God, no, he's, oh, my God. I love that so much. He was so great that Wasn't night. Wasn't he great? And he was by himself. I mean, he was just, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was not with the band. He was, uh, he was pr uh, just performing by himself. Really sweet. He stepped in for Miley oh, Cyrus because she couldn't make it. Unbelievable. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing a fundraiser for the homeless. You are? I don't, yes, I when, am. When is that? And I... That's going to be in two months. Two months. All right. And I'm going to try to get him to come you, and I, perform. It, oh, my God, if we could get him. Well, he's on tour right now, but if you oh. can get him, I'm, sh I'm sure if he's around, he would do it. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's a, he's a good one. Yeah. But there's plenty of people who will do that for you because, you know, we need... I'm, I'm glad you're this doing that here. This is the worst situation in Los Angeles' it's, history. It is ever. horrible. And I'm very excited about this, and I hope that I... You yeah. Know, do well for them. Yeah. If anyone uh, just going downtown, you're just shocked by what's happening. I mean, she wrote reams, and her library was full of all her journals, and there's so many In of them. Her then, library. When my brother got really ill, and uh, I I inherited his, you know. I inherited his. Gosh, talk about other people so many times. Yeah. Nice little wayfarer. We know you're a wayfarer. Hello. Uh I'm sorry, but... Hollywood actress boring. Diane Keaton opening up about her family's private struggles in her new memoir, Brother and... Like, you're crazy. Because <laughs> that's not the way it can be. I'm a weirdo, you know? Now, Keaton is looking back in a new book, Brother and Sister, giving a searing account of movies. When did you first get an inkling that something was wrong with Randy? It really was probably after I left... Right, so I went off and I went to acting school. He didn't have a direction. He didn't want to go to school and he hated working for my father. And so it was sort of obvious that it was becoming unusual. And he was drinking a lot by the time he was about 22, 23. Every family understands that. I wasn't really in the thick of it. The memoir is crafted from journalism made a little movie called Reds. But I think someone as romantic as you would be destroyed by them. Your brother writes you a letter. I'm going to read it. There are times in Reds when I wanted to stop the projector so the moment wouldn't move so fast. Sweet of him. I don't know what to say. That was sweet of him because of his experience and him enjoying me. I, I don't know what to say. You know, okay, sure. I'm sorry. When I look back on Randy, I, I just think, wow. I, I wish I could have been a better sister. That's all I really do. I... Then uh, Joe Kenda would be next, Morgan I wish Flies. I could have been a better sister. Growing up in the 50s, it yeah. wasn't a time when people talked about mental health and addiction. Oh, no, addiction. no, no, no. Psychiatrists early on. Nothing, nothing 
made a difference. Now in his 70s, Randy battles dementia, a change that Keaton says has actually helped to bring them closer. He's never married, and um, I think that Randy had the most significance, and he's, it's being played out now more than ever, now that he's, um, you know, he's kind of infirm in a way that he can't really express himself too much anymore. For Keaton, the book... Right, okay, so that was kind of abstract a little bit um, there. And not really seeing her talk about what she's getting out of things, she's just making bold statements, okay, this is what I'm doing. Um, like she's talking about the homeless thing and she didn't really talk about that much. So not so much on the interest based at all. I'm not really seeing interest based, so definitely leading towards a, a systematic. So yeah, I'm gonna put Diane Keaton at ENTJ, ladies and gentlemen, at 125. <coughs> oh. All right, so ENTJ at uh, 125, there we go. All right, and uh, looks like good old Joe Kenda is next. So I had no idea that Diane's uh, Diane Keaton's hat meant uh, sex appeal. I I don't I mean I must be missing something there or maybe I'm just a uncultured swine. So definitely uh, don't know what the appeal of such a hat is. Um, don't know that appeal at all. Not really sure. Don't really want Railgun to wear a hat anyway. I mean. Her hair is like perfect, so I don't really need to, to worry about that uh, per se. All right, good old Joe Kenda. All right, awesome, cool. All right, so Joe Kenda next, and Joe Kenda interview. Hi. Uh, Joe uh, Kenda interview. All right, cool. So Joe Kenda, sorry, um, go out of top for his final homicide uh, hunter uh, chats. Ted Bundy, okay, sure. Um, homicide hunter, uh, okay. A fireside chat with Joe Kenda, live event. Uh, Joe Kenda joins the table. Let's see what we got here. Let's do this one. I'm forever grateful that people feel comfortable in opening their lives. It's a relentless pursuit. Did this work call you, or is this something that you wanted? No, it's not something I anticipated. It's not something I ever believed would happen. I was a policeman. I was married to a girl I met in high school. We had two kids. We worked like dogs. We uh, saved money to send both kids to college. We did that. They graduated with zero debt. We wondered, we wondered after we did that. They graduated with zero debt because that's a TE achievement and very affiliative of him to say. Affiliative TE so yeah, We said, how do we do that? I don't know. We figured out something. So no, I didn't think that. I had a career that I loved. I would have done it for free. Kathy would not have agreed with that. But uh, I loved what I did. But I had a career and I was done with it. But they reached out. I had a career and I was done with it. And I would have been happy to do that. Very S-I-N-E. Looks like we got ourselves the first philosopher of the night. We got a philosopher type on our hands. Mr. Joe Kenda. To me, they being the media, saying we want to talk to you. And my initial reaction was, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> so my wife not comfortable said, with that. I don't want to talk to you. Not comfortable with that. That's introverted sensing. Uh, so yeah, and uh, seems pretty direct, as near as I could tell. You're going to call them? No. When I don't like these people, why would I call them? You know. So she. I don't like these people. Why would I call them? <laughs> T e f i s i n e. That is definitely philosophy. He beat based. me up for three days and uh, finally convinced me I better do that. And uh, we're filming season eight as we speak. So, season eight as we speak. It's been uh, it's been my experience of my wife as well. Like that guy is super stuffy. Can you not like get that direct initiating control S I N E? stuffiness and philosopher wait a minute direct initiating control philosopher that would mean 
ESTJ. Like literally just an ESTJ. What are you gonna do with that point? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so, you know, it is what it is, so. All right, and uh, let's keep going. Um, I will try Now it's time for here. our guest, Lieutenant Joe Kenda is a veteran of the Colorado Springs Police Department. I actually, I actually smile. I never smile on my show. <laughs> People are always shy. I never smile, smile on my own show. Well, you Maybe have a beautiful smile. There's no murders to solve here, so you can just uh, be happy. I hope yeah. there's no murder to solve. You should just be happy. Okay, that's S I N E and wanting to be wanted. Very control. He's super concrete. This guy is concrete AF. So yeah, he's ESTJ. I don't even want to spend any more time on this guy. Like, how milk toast can you get? One hour, thirty minutes. You know what I'm saying? So. Let's get that uh, show on the road. Um, so, uh, you know, let's let's uh, let's see here. ESTJ at uh, one thirty. Okay, ESTJ, um, and that so that is Joe Kenda. I hope that was the Joe Kenda I was supposed to do. I, I really hope he was, but uh, nice uh, philosopher. Uh, type uh, for sure. So let's keep going here. I need to check who's next and got some to uh, got some to delete. Mr. Joe Kenda here. Anyone think I'm out of my mind for saying these? Who's that actor that plays Joe Gibbs in NCIS? Is that guy an ESTJ? And let's be honest. Is he is he uh, an ESTJ? Um, also, I keep thinking about like. Justin Bieber like a lot and honestly I'm still gonna stick with ISTP guys like that whole Effie inferior versus SE inferior he is not afraid of his SE performance let's be straight he's just not I'm not seeing SE inferior there at all I don't think he has performance anxiety I think he has social anxiety uh, potentially that's kind of what I'm what I'm seeing okay um 32 for Kedon um Lucas Martinez, what are you adding on to? Like, I need to know. So, Dr. Darren Schmidt, okay. Um, got rid of Diane Keaton here as well. And then uh, Morgan Flies. You guys, when you're doing your add ons, you have to state what you're doing add ons to. Like, otherwise, I'm at risk of like missing it. So, you have to say specifically what you're adding on to, please. Um, okay. And then uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus. Basic Bailey, if you're gonna do Julia do Louise Dreyfus or Brett Gelman, uh, which one would you do? I need to know, please, Basic Betty, so we can get you in tonight. Um, oh, there's another Joe Kenda right there um, as well. So let's get that figured out as well. Dog the Bounty Hunter, my goodness. Uh, okay, and so. He was drugged. Um, where do I? Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> Apparently, no one likes. Uh, yeah, back and forth is beliefs. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad someone kind of agrees with me on that. Um, can someone get in touch with Basic Betty, please, to just tell me what she wants. I'd appreciate that. All right, let's look at this. Um, okay, so add on Lucas Martinez. I'm gonna do Dr. Darren Schmidt for right now. Uh, so we'll do that, Dr. Darren Schmidt, and then looks like we're doing Brett Gelman, I think. Um, Dr. Darren uh, Schmidt. I, I hope this guy is cool. Dr. Darren, uh, uh, Schmidt interview. I hope I'm spelling this guy correctly. Brett Gelman. All right, all right. I, I hear you on that one. We'll do Brett Gelman next. Um, all right. Darren Schmidt covers my stories. Lactic acidosis and cancer and ketosis um, with Dr. Darren Schmidt. Okay. Briefly discusses uh, tinnitus, lactic acidosis. There we go. We've got a nice interview. Nice. <laughs> Biohackers Lab. Hello, Please everyone. Welcome to Bulletin. Biohackers Lab. I'm your host, Gary Kerwin, and on today's episode, I have Dr. Darren Schmidt. 
Dr. Schmidt is a chiropractor who has been focusing on clinical nutrition since 1998. He believes in following the physiology and is an advocate of a low carb and keto way of eating for helping health. He uses okay. nutrition. Tell someone, tell the INFP to like, stop talking, please. To get to the root cause like, of health. Diet advice in 99 regarding the Weston A. Price Foundation. And then in 2000, I stopped. Uh, Weston A. Price Foundation. Let's open up this conversation by talking about myself and my own achievements, because like, I'm a philosopher type guys. I would never in do 2001, that. 2001, I had eight pops. So I stopped pop after that. Um, so that's when I started that around 2000 and the the reason in those early 2000s that you got so interested and decided that this is the way that you want to you want to eat was there a particular reason for that well in the chiropractic field in nutrition um it's pretty low carb keto there's a guy named dr michael dobbins who was giving lectures and he um he's passed away now but he was in ketosis for more than more than 20 years um he had uh uh, prostate cancer from working on nuclear subs as a nuclear technician. He got too much radiation and it did extend his life. He went into several stories about that, but um, I'd also been to a seminar on uh, the Western New Price Foundation. <clears throat> and in the mid nineties, I tried vegetarian. And then in the mid nineties, I tried this and I tried that two SI statements. Oh, look, another philosopher folks, another philosopher. Good old philosophers. In eating, I stopped eating meat for a number of months, up to a year. Ate a lot of beans, and my hair started falling out, and I was really depressed, and it was really hair bad. Falling out. So throughout my own self experimentation. So this ESTJ is basically saying that his hair started falling out because of this. Okay, very concrete, sir, and uh, making that uh, that statement about your hair falling out. Okay, very concrete. And then through the guidance of people in the natural healthcare world, um, the seminars that I attended and other chiropractors, that's what I got. All, all these other people, all these other people, these achieved people, these TE achieved people, and I got to meet them, SI. Okay, thank you. And by the, for the record, sir, you are direct and you are also extremely boring for the record, sir. I mean... How dry can you get? All right, guys, this is Liam here from Liam Subs Tinnitus. And for those of you who've been following me, you know that I'm traveling around America. Now, I've been in nutrition practice for 21 years, and I've tried so many pills, supplements, and herbs, et cetera, et cetera, with zero success. So I can understand how people can be super frustrated with their tinnitus and not getting good solutions. But once I started learning about ketosis, yeah, that's because Sergey Rachmaninoff, uh, Billy Clinton, or Billary Clinton, that's hilarious. Uh, Bill and Hillary, they're like kind of more of an arranged marriage. And there's like, I don't know, there's like rumors about there, like about the two of them not actually having a happy marriage at all. It's just a, it's just a marriage for status, basically. It's not like actually real, even though they'd like to think it, people to think it's real, I'm sure. That was now three years ago, I started teaching it to my patients. And then sometimes people would say, yeah, my... No, I typed Bill Clinton as an ESFP. I did. Tinnitus is better. And I was like getting really excited like, oh my gosh, this might be the thing. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't like broadcast it. And I was waiting for more and more results. Then I saw the interview with Dr. Kraft. Oh my gosh, this guy is actually like movement. Oh, he's so movement. Oh man, he's so systematic. So movement right now. Actually, it was Ivor Cummins. So I saw the interview with Ivor Cummins and Dr. Kenneth Brookler, and he's an ENT. Oh, did I just like randomly guess their celebrity couple names? He, and he said that he took. Yeah, Ben Shapiro is an ISTJ. I think this guy's an ISTJ. This is the best thing for tinnitus. So I saw that. I was like, okay, good. So we discovered the same thing. And so I've been attracting some tinnitus patients once I started talking about that on my YouTube channel. And attracting some tinnitus patients, which I've been trying to do on my YouTube channel, very N-E of him to state. Um, and uh, he's doing this because he wants to do the right things. He's very affiliative. So we know he's an SJ. We know he's TEFI, so he's an STJ. Seems movement, direct responding movement. So it looks like he's an ISTJ. So let's try to disprove that. Getting good results. So I have a guy now, he has had tinnitus 
um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I got him into ketosis. And in the first week, it was greatly diminished and sometimes totally gone. Now it's been three months, and he's continuing to get improvement. So now it's like not during the day at all, only at night, and even that's diminishing. I, I used to know a long time, August. So the more you're in ketosis, the better the results you get. So fasting brings about autophagy. If you do like a water-only fast for five days, the autophagy accelerates greatly at day four. Now you can do short-term fasts like a day and have some autophagy. And what it does is it breaks down cells. The old cells need to go away. And then you get new stem cells that are naive and they become like a liver cell or an immune system cell. And then you get, like, that's how you regenerate your organs. So that's a very important tool for healing. But there's a problem if you have mold in your body. Now, I, I put mold together with candida, fungus, yeast. It's oh, it's interesting, talking about mold. There's a problem with that. Uh, it goes further being systematic. And uh, he actually initiated a point there a little bit. So, But it doesn't seem to be outcome-focused. So he's still responding underneath the... Uh, the uh, the claims that's being made. I'm still going it's just, It's all the here. same kind of organism. And they can feed off of ketones. So when you're, in, when you're fasting or you're in ketosis, your body's not using sugar as much anymore. It's using more fat. And the fat is converted into ketones, which is a water-soluble chemical. But mold can grow on ketones. So that's a problem. Molds can grow on ketones. That's very interesting. I'll have to look that up personally myself. Uh, so yeah, um, awesome. Molds can grow on ketones. And then uh, this guy, we're gonna go here. And uh, Dr. Darren Schmidt. Uh, and I'm calling him ISTJ guys straight up at 140. Awesome. So let's move on to the next one here, Mr. ISTJ. Don't know why I did, uh, let's uh, fix that. All right, so who's next on the list? Let's get Dr. Darren Schmidt. So it looks like Brett Gelman is next. Good old Brett Gelman. Could have sworn we've done Brett Gelman in the past. Could have sworn we have. I'll know as soon as I see his face if I have or not. Let's see. Brett Gelman. Ah, Gelman interview. Awesome. This guy, gosh, he's so familiar, but no, I don't think I've actually done that Brett Gelman's Big Larry Street if you only knew Let's see some Larry King we play a little game here called if you only knew right proudest achievement just the fact that I'm I'm where I'm at right now food you can't stomach food I can't stomach uh, the fact that where I'm at right now, it's actually a T-I-F-E statement. It's kind of a form of self-deprecation for Mr. Brett Gilman. So, because he's not actually being specific about his achievement. He doesn't really care about the achievement. I mean, I can't, I can't eat foie gras. I don't, you know. What? I don't know why. I, I know it's just like, you know, what are they, like choke the goose and then, then stuff the goose with another yeah. goose or something? I hate they chuck the goose, stuff the goose. That's initiating, and he was also being informative in that, uh, answering uh, Larry uh, King in that uh, question as well. I'm going to turn up the volume so you guys can hear a little bit better. Hate yeah. eggs. Yeah. Oh, you hate eggs? Hate them. I go what? through a non-egg phase. So. Joe Biden is an ESTJ. Sometimes, Sometimes they are, seem disgusting to me. What's something that scares you? Uh, scares me. Uh, disease, Yeah. But the is, big ones, not like little germ ones. Is there a show you're currently binge watching? Uh, Succession. 
which of the characters have you played do you relate the most to? <laughs> I'd say, uh, I mean, really, in recent years, all of them, I, I relate to them. I feel like I'm being, I'm telling my emotional, psychological autobiography sometimes. Someone you wish you could switch. That was abstract. Talking about, I relate to all these characters and, you know, uh, and I was doing an expert intuition abstraction. Places with for a day. For a day. Um, I'd say, uh, I don't know, probably DiCaprio. Let's see what that's like. Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> a secret talent. Secret talent. Um, I can quiver my lips really fast in a very strange way. Let me see. How the do you do that? I don't know. It took How a lot of practice and a whole lot even, of loneliness. What made you even think of doing uh, I don't know. You know, I, I, I think, well, you know, I can't go into uh, how I, I practice. Oh, my gosh. This guy just sounds like an ENTP. I got a few secret talents like that that, like, are just kind of crazy. Like, for example, like, you know, my ear, I can make it go inside out, and it stays inside out like this, and I can just pop it, you know, and it's just like... You know, so yeah, I totally understand where he's coming from from that. He's being so movement. He's just enjoying the the journey. T I F E talking about his own experience. This guy is a crusader, obviously, and uh, for initiating movement, he's an ENTP. Like it's super spot on. Brett Gellman is an ENTP, but let's go to a different interview and verify that. What, what are you binging on? Um, well, Fleabag is something yeah, that I definitely am binging on. Well, we just finished Fleabag, which we love. Oh, uh, the name. I think every show that I watch. Am I really? And, 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 and yeah. every time I see a car park over the line, I think of your Curb the Enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is infuriating. I know, it is really horrible. I mean, that, that character is probably the, I've played some real some real dirtbags, but that yeah. character is the worst. The pig parker, yeah. Now, now. I'm just kidding. Well, he's not the worst. You're, you're, you talk about that. This character. one's pretty bad. Yeah, I was gonna say this, this, this character. Way worse. He's so awkward. This character is way worse. He's yeah. so awkward, and you play him so well. I mean, he keeps initiating and interrupting them and informing as well. Still very movement. Keeps initiating. Thank you. You just cringe when you see every everything he does on the screen. Yeah. That must be hard to do that. Um, it is. Yeah, you have to really like go into the parts of yourself that you really don't like that you know are there. But I think that that's kind of what the whole like. show is about and what it asks viewers to do. And that she's so good at making a uh, making into a good time. I think. At what point did you realize that you had hit the magic with the show? That this would be the show that even the celebrities are binging. You know, I, it, it's like one of the. It's, you do a show like this and. You're like, well, it feels important and really special to me. And so if hopefully people agree, you never know. You know, I've been on things where I've thought that and that it didn't get this reaction, but it's uh, it's not a surprise, but I'm very, I'm very pleased, you know? Yeah. For, for the way people... Surprise, very pleased, talking about how other people are valuing his work. It's another TIFE statement. I'm just not seeing anything different. Uh, definitely still hating on me. I met this man who is Mr. K on NBC. Really, everybody got along really well, and it was, uh, I really loved Look playing that. that character. I got, Fellow like, a chance ENTP to play, like, one of those flashy my shirts, archetypical, you know what I'm uh, the archetypical, like, watermelon. sitcom, got NBC his, sitcom uh, weirdo. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Flowers like the or something? Exactly. Yeah. Like the Kramer yeah. of yeah. Go On. Or the Reverend Jim. Yes, That's what Matthew, Matthew Perry would say. Is, is that like, right? You're like the Reverend the Jim. The Reverend of Jim. Yeah, Matthew Perry would say that. Very abstract of you, good sir. All right, so Brett Gelman, I'm calling as a definite ENTP. So, Brett Gelman, uh, ENTP. And then this is 148, 149. Okay, cool. Awesome. And I'm going to close out Super Chats, folks. Definitely uh, closing out the Super Chats uh, for this evening. No more Super Chats, please. We are winding down the show. Definitely winding down the show. So Brett Gelman. Uh, deleting that. Deleting that. Okay. And uh, looks like... Dylan Matheson is next. 
And then uh, Dita Von Tees, Dylan Matheson. All right, let's see how Mr. Dylan comes out here. Dylan uh, Matheson uh, interview. American Performer, Rundown, Tiny Movie Parts, uh, Tiny Movie Parts, Soul Kitchen, Tiny Movie Parts, Interview with Tiny Movie Parts. The heck? I don't like. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, <coughs> that's the name of his band, but <coughs> let's try to let's see who he is in an expert situation. How to be swell. Let's try this. Even like on the way up here, like we went to like some gas station. Uh, what was it? Like in Wisconsin. And like some lady like held the door open Straight for me. Movement. Like, oh, thank you so much. And she was like some like elderly lady that like, for him. I was like, oh, you don't really don't need to do that. But I was really nice to you. And uh, just like a little thing like that where it's like just it almost seems meaningless. Like it doesn't matter much to like do that action. But it's like I, I won't forget that. Like that just that helped. Like it was really nice for it was like, you know, raining outside really cold and she helped me out. Just like a little thing like that can go. Oh, it's really nice of her. A little thing like that can go can go a long way. Um, and uh, OK, so that's very uh, T.I.F.E. He's sharing. I think he's sharing his experience, but he may be an SE user still. Uh, definitely movement and uh, seems um, seems informative so far. So a long way. I'm Dylan Mathiason, and these are my tips to being swell. So with swell, it's kind of about just trying to be optimistic in a sh shit world, or like if you're like in a slump, and uh, basically like focusing on your happy brain cells in hopes that it'll overcome like all your negativity, like your doubts, weaknesses, fears, etc. There's a lyric that says, "May your brain cells swell with love." Just focus on the ups, because. You know, regardless, like we're we're all gonna we're gonna die someday, so might as well like just try, be the best you that you can be to yourself and to others. I mean, it sounds so cliche to say like you're not alone, but I mean that's completely true. I remember like six. Keeps talking about other people's experiences. Very se. He's made two se statements in a row so far. Very tife. Might be a Templar type. Uh, I'm not sure. I almost get like an ENFP feeling off of him, quite frankly. Six years ago, we played a coffee shop in Baltimore, one of our earlier tours. And I was, I was like 20 years old and I had like, that was my first like severe like panic attack. Like it was just absolutely awful. Like I like lost my mind and I was like crying. It was like, it was a bad deal. And uh, the rest of that tour, like I just like couldn't shake it really. Talking it through with like Matt and Bill, like my bandmates and like to my friends at home, uh, it just kind of helped me out and I feel like just knowing like, you know, that you're literally, you're not alone. Like, you know, we're all here. You're not alone because I'm interdependent AF because I'm affiliative. I am affiliative. Human. Oh, and yeah. Like, think like you're, you're going to be scared. You're going to be happy. Things like that happen. And uh, just reaching out is a huge deal. All you can do is try, you know, and just, you know, we're all here on this planet and just trying to help each other out and make sure we have a good life. Friendship's like a big thing. Gosh, <laughs> that was actually an FI value statement pretty hard. Yeah, it's kind of transitioning. Thing, you know, um, I always talked about how like working at Little Caesars or like a job, like, uh, you know, just like a job like that, for an example. Maybe it wouldn't be like my favorite thing to do, but if all my friends were doing it with me, it'd be a blast. I was like, if all my friends were doing it with me, it'd be a blast because I am affiliative and I think that was pretty abstract. Talking about all these uh, possibilities and how his song lyrics are very, very symbol symbolical, very abstract and affiliative. He, this guy looks like an NF straight up. Dylan Matheson is definitely looking more and more like an NF. Six billion people out there, you know, you're bound to find at least one person you connect with. Try find the light in any situation like try your best to just like keep your chin up some things might not be as bad as you think in your head but you won't know until you reach out and talk to people a great example like this last tour we did with we played a show in toronto with a 
real friends. And the first song, uh, I was like playing like a tappy part and like some drunk fan or someone threw like a beer thing on stage and hit my guitar and like, I was just laughing like no big deal. And then I slipped and like slammed my leg so hard on the ground. It hurt so bad. Throughout the, the rest of the set it hurt like heck, but like I just would look out in the crowd and focus on like, this hurts so bad, but I'm just gonna focus out on like the fun. Yeah, I'm like in pain, but you know, screw it. I thought like that was one of the worst sets we played. Yeah, like I'm in pain, but like screw it. Very SI, very SI statements. Gosh, interesting. Played ever as a band, and then like the like like the next few days online, I just saw people saying like, Timey Parts played it amazing. That they, they killed it in Toronto. They just did outstanding, and like very like positive outlook. And I was like, wow, maybe we didn't play that bad. It was just all you know, all in here. Just try to spread your like happiness to each other. Like you know, like that elderly lady opening up the door for me at the gas station at like a loves you know truck stop in Wisconsin like little things like that like is just very important for the long run well it's very specific uh, long term memory is also looks like introverted sensing he might be an ENFP I'm like going back and forth between ENFP and INFJ like crazy it just seems so informed initiating movement hand, uh, giving so many additional uh, uh so many different uh, additional nuggets. So yeah, it seems forward initiating movement, AF, definitely NF. I mean, I, so far guys, this guy looks like ENFP, hardcore, even dresses like one. It's like a it's like a cute little ESTP because ESTP is Puerto Rico, but in reality, he's actually an ENFP. He's got so much ENFP. Hi, I'm Dylan. Hey, I'm Bill. I'm Matt. And we're Tiny Moving Parts and you're watching Ambi. Shea Amore, how have things been treating you so far? Really good. Yeah, it's been awesome. Like, all, like Culture Abuse, they're opening the tour, and like even them, they're just all like awesome dudes and awesome bands, and it's just everybody's getting along really well. It's awesome. I feel like awesome's the key word. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, after this, you'll be hitting the road with The Wonder Years and Pup, both bands that we love so much. Feels like you guys have just been touring relentlessly, though. How are you getting through all of this stuff? I mean, we... It's so fun to us still. I mean, we're not like bored of it or anything. We get really bored at being at home. Just because, you know, it, it seems like he's got pretty good FE going um, in terms of caring for others. But then he's more of like, oh, this hurts so bad. But I need to I need to perform. I need to achieve in this. Area. And it could be cobbled around with like, okay, is this TE or is it SE? You know, Because like yeah. when we're at home, like us three are still hanging out like every day with each other. And like in their basement like watching TV or summer band practicing so they're like might as well just tour as much as possible because that's a lot more fun than yeah. this so I noticed when you guys are on the road you post a lot of hot tub or pool photographs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when you aren't performing do you find that you're just chilling out in the hotel room yeah we like to do that like uh we already booked our hotel for tomorrow's off day and we made sure it had a hot tub in it <laughs> yeah. but we like to do like other things too like that's more of a evening thing yeah Wow, is that like an INTP musician in the background or an ISFP? I don't know. Yeah. Well, what else do you guys like doing when you have a day off? We might try golf tomorrow. I don't know how the weather's going to be, but okay. yeah, I'm not, yeah we, like, we all like to golf. <laughs> <laughs> well, that guy on the left definitely looks like an INFJ for sure. So it looks like we got a golden pair in this band. So. For our online description on Facebook, you have, we would love to play your house. So have you played your fair share of house gigs? That's like all we used to do way back in the day. It was like when we. Yeah, that's a very humble ENFP. He's not really talking about himself so much. I'd say it's probably because he's INFJ shadow focused, not very ISTJ focused. It's pretty interesting. Booked our own tours and just be like putting out, hey, we're trying to do this tour. Does anyone know where we can play? And typically that was like house shows back then. Yeah. Now we don't do it as often, but we still try to do it sometimes. And it's, yeah. it's really fun. Well, what have been some. Do a different one. Need to see more. Let's see here. Uh, time of all right. Favorite albums. Hey, I'm Dylan Mathiason. I play guitar and I sing in Tiny Moving Parts, and I pick for one of my favorite. albums. Opens up with his achievements right at the beginning, but then again, he's probably supposed to say that so. Albums, Me Without You is A to B Life. And I picked it because it's an incredible album. I was, about like eight years ago, 
I was about, I was 15 years old and that was the first time I heard the album. And I was like shocked at like how intense and raw the sound was, but it was like super honest in a way. So like it really impacted me as like a songwriter. Uh, it just really influenced me a lot. And yeah, I mean like the first song that Bolted Binary is like one of the coolest ways to ever open up an album. They just yell, let us die, let us die. It's just, fu it's fucking sweet. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just really, like I said, I really like it because it sounds really raw, but it's also like clean, like it has its own tone to it. And they worked with Jay Robbins, which we actually, Tiny Moving Parts, went with Jay Robbins uh, for our last album, Pleasant Living, so it's kind of Okay, another TE name drop there. Getting some more TE with this guy. Cool, like, you know, full circle, like when I was 15, I never expected to, you know, record with the guy who recorded my favorite album, so. Um, yeah, yeah, that's why this record the guy who recorded my favorite albums. Okay, that's another TE statement. Get more TE. Awesome. It's a really special, uh, special album to us, to me, and to the rest of the band too. So, I mean, I love every Me Without You record, but this is like the first time I ever heard the band or anything, so I didn't know what to really expect. And um, yeah, the first song I heard was the first track off this, and it was just. It starts with like that cool riff, like, do, 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 do. and then all of a sudden the vocals just come in, and I'm just like, whoa. Just like, I was shocked, but I loved it, and I listened to it straight through. And I mean, eight years later to now, I just keep listening to it, you know? I like it. But yeah, like the other ones, like Catch Rust the Foxes is awesome, and you know, Brother Sister, and like the other ones are just great too, but this one's like special, special. Yeah, I have a few times. Yep, yep. So I'm in Minneapolis. And uh, they played a show one time in Fargo, North Dakota. And uh, it was kind of cool because not many bands come to Fargo. So the show, it was a pretty small show. I'd say like maybe 70, 80 people. And just got to t hang out with the band and everything. And it was just really nice, you know? Nice people. So it's great. Cool. It makes you like the band even more, you know? So I think I was just searching on the internet. I believe, I don't know if it was when we had like LimeWire, like illegally downloading it or some, somewhere at that time, I listened to it on my computer with my crappy headphones and I just thought, whoa, this is great. And then the next, later that week, I went to like some, like a Best Buy or something and bought the CD there, I found it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is meant to be. I didn't know it was gonna be here, so. Gosh, he's so informed, he just won't stop. Keeps initiating, so yeah, ENFP guys, I can't, I'm trying really hard to disprove him being an ENFP, but I can't, he's an ENFP. Like I, I want, I want to say that he's something else. I tried to say he's an INTJ, didn't work. I tried to say INFJ, didn't work. I tried so hard to get him into like finisher mode, but I couldn't, he's just such a freaking starter. I can't, I can't get out of it. F-I-T-E crazily, like he reminds me of a, a couple ENFP uh, family members I, I have. Um, Kudos to him for having all the familial support that he's had in his life because uh, that's pretty cool. And I don't know, it's not very often that you see grateful ENFPs, but I mean, I guess that's what happens when uh, they can get into their fame pretty quick and then they're just like super excited all the time with that zany charm that uh, ENFPs get. But yeah, I, I just have to say that this guy, Dylan Mathiasen, is definitely a uh, an ENFP. I try to prove it, but it's just not... Just not really seeing it. Not really seeing it. So. Uh, let's see. Okay. ENFP. Oops. Um, Dylan uh, Mathiasen ENFP at 20200. Okay. And then who is next? All right. I believe that is, okay, 2499, this is, uh, oh, okay, Diavantes. Diavantes, let's do this one. Please review. All right, interview, interview. 
Oh my gosh, she's so essy. She looks like a freaking Wayfair. We got like Wayfair woman all over here. Let's see. Oh, That's thank you. Of what you do. Happy it's an incredible you. thing. We've been talking about burlesque all day, and you do. Mm -hmm. You believe it's something we should all be embracing a little bit more. Well, lives. I mean, it's not for everyone, I suppose, but I just think, um, you know, it's 2020. We don't have to, you know, we, we can still be. Uh, respected and considered intelligent we can also love striptease we can enjoy watching erotica and we can also do it if we can enjoy watching erotica we can do striptease okay thank you for being pragmatic af uh you're also uh dita von uh i forget how to like spell her name um and she's also very direct as well she's pragmatic um, obvious SE and I user with her aesthetic uh, that she's going for. And I'm gonna have to say, T like, I, I'll be surprised if she's not an INTJ. I'll just be straight with you guys. But if we want that. to, so that's all I'm saying. You say you were a really shy person growing up. How do you get the confidence to perform that way? Because, I mean, it is, it is utter confidence, yeah. isn't well, it? I'm not an exhibitionist or anything. It was really just like, when I, I grew up wanting to be a ballerina, and I just wasn't good enough to be a ballet dancer. I could never remember the steps. You know, I couldn't keep up. I was the snowflake in the back that was like, I don't know what's going on right now, but I love ballet. And then when I got older, I realized what I really loved about being a ballet dancer was sort of like the red velvet curtains and the spotlight and the, the costumes and the makeup and the drama and the, the femininity. So uh, I kind of got all of those things in Berlin. Very systematic. That was uh, that was quite systematic. Talking about the system that she got involved with, um, and uh, talking about the achievement pro uh, purpose and uh, making uh, decisions based on titles and whatnot. That's T E F I. So she looks like a Wayfair for sure, as we discussed earlier. And uh, but which Wayfair is she? Um, is she um, pragmatic and systematic? Looks like an N T type. So is she an e -N -T E N T J or an I N T J? Less. And when I was started doing it there wasn't like a huge scene like there is now and um so there was definitely a from that then, for it from wanting to be a ballerina to being a burlesque um, star because it's a huge jump yeah well when i was uh her aesthetic seems way too over the top for as a child quite frankly i'm gonna i'm thinking when i was like period. 18 years old i was I was already dressing in vintage style, oh. and I was I was working in a lingerie store, so I got really into vintage lingerie. So I wanted to be photographed in like as a pinup girl, and it started there. While I w became obsessed with with pinup and pinup girls of the 1930s and 40s, I noticed a lot of them were burlesque dancers, oh. and I was like, well, maybe I should do that, like find the same, you know, parallel as um, the so pinups and the burlesque to, stars. To have somebody so glad. That's experted sensing, talking about what other people are doing and then doing the same thing themselves, wanting to do the same thing themselves. And Marissa, I was just thinking, <laughs> because everybody dresses down now, don't they? Yes, the SE is performance. Stars are in trackies and they're in their jeans. This glam, but is it exhausting to be like that all the time? Um, well, no, I mean, I'm not like 100%, I don't like waft around my house and like, you know, lashes and lipstick and everything. Aww. I have my very casual <laughs> looks, but, you know, I'm wearing trousers today. No, um, I don't know, I just feel like, no, she's not good. So she is so gorgeous and glamorous. <laughs> oh. And we, I, I actually asked, I, I was reading about you. And, and tell me how you kind of got into the lingerie look. Well, I was obsessed with lingerie when I was a little girl. I used to sneak into my mom's lingerie door and I was like, what are these things? <laughs> right. And they were mysterious and lacy and feminine. And I just remember being like, right, it, I see lingerie. It was like, you know, I used to sneak my dad. Kind of interesting watching NTJ women seeking to become more feminine because they're innately masculine and actually seeking the feminine instead of already starting out as the feminine. It's playboys under the bed, so I was like, ooh, stockings. I'm going right. to wear those too. Right. I'm on them. My mom said, okay, you can wear hosiery, you know. And I got that leg, you know, the, the egg, egg. The egg, the legs, <laughs> pantyhose that came in the egg. And the egg's cool, don't get me wrong. The egg is cool. It's, they don't make that egg anymore. Right. <laughs> I wrote a letter to them once saying, hey, what, what happened to the egg? You and then you that. pulled them out and they were all wrinkled and it was yeah. always suntan color. That was always the color, suntan, remember? Yeah, really awful and like shriveled up and everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. Well, you I started way. working in a lingerie store because I was like, no, I'm wearing nice lingerie. So when I was 15, my first job was in a lingerie store, and now I have my own lingerie brand that's at Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom. And uh, anyway, so lingerie's been kind of like 
the, the obsession with mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. uh, um, is really what led me to my pinup. Yeah, definitely movement. She's just talking about the journey as she keeps going, direct responding movement. We know she's a finisher. We know she's a wafer. She's an NT. So, yeah, she is an INTJ. She is not an ENTJ. So there you have it, 2408. So let's see here. Dito Von Tees, INTJ. And this is uh, 208. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. Everyone wants that pen, pen Badgley constantly coming at me for pen. You guys want me to do pen, pen Badgley? Is, what, is that what I'm hearing? Everyone, like I'm getting text messages from people asking me to do pen Badgley. Like, so, okay. Um, let's see, uh, let's see how that goes. Pen Badgley, all right. I hope I spelled that correctly. I probably spelled it wrong. Sorry. Let's see. No, stop. Let's do some uh, pen badgley uh, badgley interview. Awesome. INTJ, yeah. Pen badgley talks hit series you. Um, pen badgley answers your burning questions. All right, uh, characters and social media, season two, cast of Victoria Pedretti, Killer Twist, season three, Secrets, Actors on Actors, Full Conversation. Uh, opens up its new season of You, a little bit more. Thank you for having me. Um, it's, it's, it's great to have you. Did you, Penn, did you Thank you for having me in that very uh, F-E, S-I, Crusader type of voice, you know? Do you notice a shift in, season one was on Lifetime, and then it was on Netflix, and um, some of us watched it on Lifetime, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it shows up on Netflix, and... Yeah, uh, part of this cultural discourse, kind of, almost, you know? Um, yeah, it's been huge, and it's it, it reflects the way that I mean, television has changed just just the way you view it. Yeah. I mean, wow, he just initiated like three times and like cut himself off. My goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna put uh, some initiating points down. From ten years ago, like when Gossip Girl first came out. I mean, it's just like it's not even. The, I was trying to explain cable to my stepson, and I mean, I realized I'm like, man, you don't even how. Yeah, guys with that totally don't care look, basic Betty are usually fi tricksters. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, so everything changed. And then did that make you feel any differently about like a different pressure about going back into shooting season two? Because I mentioned when you're filming season one, it's sort of like, yeah, like here's this like weird kind of awesome. Biz this is one of those. And I imagine you had that on, on Gossip Girl, too. Well, Gossip Girl was more obviously designed to just be a hit. Like that's what they were trying to do. Um, this is not. 100% different from that but it but because it centers around a guy who is acting this way I mean you just can't guarantee anything there's something to this show that does actually share DNA with Gossip Girl just enough so that it can be what it's become your hair yeah, it's my hair mm -hmm. yeah okay. it's probably partly my <laughs> hair <laughs> um uh but then it also has this 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 really key element where, I mean, it's quite subversive, it's quite disturbing, and hopefully what that does is that it then becomes this thought-provoking portal into, wow, yeah, a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these things that we've just sort of lazily accepted and consumed in the past and passed off as, as like, a, like a desirable relationship model is crazy. It's actually just crazy. Yeah. As a, as a desirable relationship model, this is crazy. Oof. I am seriously going back and forth between abstract and concrete with him, for sure. I am going to say systematic, the way he's talking about relationship models, uh, for sure. And I'm also going back and forth between pragmatic and affiliative, but I'm leaning more towards affiliative and putting a point there. Definitely uh, T-I-F-E, hardcore. Um, and let's just keep going from there.
it's yeah i mean joe goldberg your character in case anyone has not seen you and if you haven't just cancel your plans and go binge two seasons on netflix where it is <laughs> living now um he's he is i don't even know what his diagnosis is but well, he's a murderer yeah i mean I you mean, know okay so to be fair here's the way i see it and there are people i think like i've read reviews from uh what do you call them you call them like the Okay, no, 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 no. To be fair, so he interrupts her again, and then he TI'd her again. So let's keep going. They're like medical journals. Mm -hmm. I actually read a... And the fact that he interrupted her, I technically have to put a point down for pragmatic as well. ...review that was in a medical journal where a person who I think was at least in their 30s, they seemed like they were getting some kind of... I mean, this was an advanced human mind, basically reviewing the show in order to diagnose the character and naming all the various kind of like uh, complexes and conditions he has. So there's that. He does have these things. But I have to say, he to me is an allegory. He's a metaphor. He's a commentary. He's not a real person. Mm -hmm. Okay, talking about metaphor, allegory, he's not a real a person. That's an abstraction point. So he's cognitive transitioning right like mad right now, guys. And honestly, this is kind of where I'm at with Penn Badgley right now. Uh, definitely Crusader. Looking at Crusader so far, because um, he said to be fair uh, in the way that he did, and he interrupting her. And I am going back and forth right now between ISFJ or ENTP. Seriously, going back and forth between those two right now. So let's see where it's going. I'm just seeing some cognitive transitioning. This guy is a little bit more advanced. So uh, let's. Hey, I'm Penn Badgley. I'm here at BuzzFeed, and I am here to answer your burning questions. So, if you haven't seen you season two, don't know. Uh, but there's spoilers here, so you're just gonna want to watch this later, or spoil it for yourself if you don't have uh, discipline of any kind. All right, this one. Spoil it for yourself if you don't have any discipline of any kind. That was uh, very interesting uh, and abstract. Um, and that was also in any statement talking about what they want to do, uh, what they desire, basically. Ooh, so hot. What was it like filming the scene where Joe cleans up Jasper's body after killing? Cleans up? Not sure about that language. <laughs> was it the most gruesome scene? Because he puts him in a meat grinder, by the way. Was it the most gruesome scene for you to film? Yes. Yeah. No, actually. So here's a spoiler. Yeah, when Delilah is dead, on the floor of the cage with her throat slashed, the amount of fake blood that was required to make that look real was more gruesome. Next question. Uh, what was the- That was uh, more gruesome. Okay, that's another point for pragmatic. Gonna have to say that for sure. And uh... The original audition process, life it didn't audition. No, I'm kidding. Uh, well, I met Greg and Sarah. They apparently, you know, very much wanted me for it. And, and, and it was really ultimately my conversations with them that that made me uh, overcome my my pesky moral conflict over playing such a guy. How is fairness a crusader thing? Because crusaders live in a world of fairness. Everything to them has to be fair. You can learn more about this in season 17, episode 6. Yeah, it's episode 6. But you had another part to the question. Just go to like the YouTube channel, click playlists, go to season 17, watch episode six. Uh, who are the Alpha Quadra, the Crusaders? How did you hear about the project? My agent, nothing, nothing mysterious there. <laughs> One of the biggest episodes in season two was definitely when Joe and Forty trip on LSD, I agree. Any fun memories from filming those episodes? Yeah, yeah, that was actually the most fun for me, I think, because it was the most physical, the most strange and maniacal. Yeah, jumping out of the window was fun. We actually had to do more stunts than you see, really, than... So, yeah, it's, it's always fun to do physical stuff. Trying to act as though I'm, you know... It's always fun to do physical stuff. He's always talking about his own experience, so yeah, definitely Crusader, hands down. But trying to figure out if he's an ISFJ or an ENTP, that's gonna be tough. Tough for me. Listen, everybody, you know my next guest from Gossip Girl, Easy A, and John Tucker. Sitting right down there. Oh, thank you. Nice thank to you. see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It is an honor, I gotta say. I remember even back in the day, Strangers with Candy. So you watched Strangers yeah, with Candy? Yeah, I mean, candy? I, I was I was a bit young for it. But, wow. Uh, and then I'm was... a bit young for it. It's a weird <laughs> show. It, yeah, yeah, it's true. That's, wow, that's okay. Really well, true. nice so to I'm meet just, someone who's a mo Knowing that Steve Colbert is actually an ENTP, let's see how much they trigger each other.
emotionally damaged? That's nice. <laughs> well, you are uh, now in this runaway smash called You. Yes. Okay, people are obsessed with this show. <laughs> it's a phenomenon. You play a sociopathic killer named jo is it Joe. Joe. Yeah. Joe. Okay. And um, do you have anything to say? People love Joe. Okay, yeah. do you have anything to say yeah. to the people out there who say they want to date Joe, despite the minor flaw <laughs> of murdering people? Um, I'd say uh, slide into my DMs. No, um... <laughs> I'm, I'm, mar I'm got, married. Just, I'm married. It just yeah, happened. I, it sorry. just happened. No, I mean, but it's... I have to say, though, it's not entirely fair to put that on the viewer because... Oh, look, more fair. We are purposefully creating a device that is meant to be provocative, uh -huh. hopefully, hopefully thought-provoking, yes. and not just titillating. Yes. Um, it's not a clinical portrait of a serial killer, you know? It's, I mean... It's a fun portrait of it's a serial a, yeah. killer. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 a, yeah, it's just a romp. I mean, I think it's intended to function as a, as a, as a social commentary. On it's what? A... What is it common? Intended to function as a social uh, commentary. That's another abstract statement that he's made. Thing on there, Penn Badger? Well, I'll show you, man. Um, I, I, no, seriously, is it? I do experience it as such. I struggle greatly with the, the, the conflict of playing such a guy and him being partly so likable and people having such a, as we say, thirsty response to him. <laughs> Um, what do you think it says about our society that people are attracted to this uh, psychopath? Yeah, well, it says something about the, how much we are willing to be patient and forgive uh, uh, someone who inhabits a body that looks something like, like mine, the color of my skin, my gender, these sorts of things, these sorts of uh, privileges, and, you know, and, and how much less willing to forgive people who, who don't fit those, those boxes, mm -hmm. you know? So... You, as this character, have, have this neat trick of going from charming to uh, very creepy. Yeah. Fairly, fairly smoothly. Somewhat. Is there a trick? Is there a trick for making that turn from charming to creepy? It is shockingly simple. <laughs> it does not mean it's easy. <laughs> Although sometimes it is. Um, Although sometimes it is. He initiated again. He's very informative. Um, seems movement. I'm... Guys, I... Hard as I try... Going for the if you indulged in some binge-washing binge over the holiday weekend, you may have landed this stalks a woman he just met. We're going to talk to Penn in a moment, but first, spoiler alert, we want to tell you more about you. Thriller series originally broadcast on Lifetime, now streaming on Netflix, which has gained millions of new viewers in recent weeks. Everyone just calls me Beck. And there you were. Every account set to public, you want to be seen, heard known of course i obliged it tells the tale of a new york city bookstore manager named joe who exploits today's technology uh -oh. Uh -oh. And Ashley, we were just saying you don't okay. uh so seem creepy at all he seems like a nice Here's guy wait oh. Oh. No. can you believe this because this was a show that had a whole life on lifetime it's yeah. Good, yeah now it's on netflix and it's blown up why do you think that is? I mean, that's a, that says a lot about the way youth consume media, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's like... So there's a lot of way about how youth consume media, I guess. Gosh, that's so abstract and kind of like, I'll admit that came off as T.I. arrogant. Let's be honest. <laughs> that was like, wow. The, the internet is changing everything. Yeah. Well, what's stalking, it's changing <laughs> stalking. Yeah. It's making it a lot easier. Yes. It's true. Okay, now... Binging and stalking are now things... <laughs> By the way, this show is addictive. If you start watching... Binging and stalking are now things... Uh, yeah, I mean, this guy is obviously an extrovert and informed initiating movement. He's a starter. And uh, he's not... Uh, he's just not an ISFJ. He's too abstract... Or, yeah, he's too abstract for that. And he's not really affiliative. I'm seeing more with the pragmatism coming in now. So he's not really talking about doing the right thing. So, ergo, I have no choice but to conclude... Uh, he is an ENTP. Um, so let's see here. What's his name? Uh, ben Badgley. ENTP. That's two. And then, um, and because like, kind of in a mood for it. 
Let's do one last one for the time being. Let's go back to Justin Bieber because this is gonna haunt me forever unless I do. So let's do it. Um, let's do some. Uh, let's do some Biebs, all right? Let's get some uh, Justin Bieber rudest moments. How about that? Now, why not that? Um, come on. And uh, just uh, Justin Bieber emotionally abused me. Full interview, part one. Zach Sang and the Gang, finally. What's up? Justin Bieber. What's up, dude? Woo! Hello, sir. This is, up, this is a beautiful moment. It is a beautiful moment. I feel like I've been waiting for this moment my entire life. Okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, this is... Me too. This Not is so. it. Thank you. Good. Oh yeah, me too. Very. How's your life right now, dude? Mirroring. It's like he's literally mirroring because he is a Templar. It's been so busy. I'm just trying to get back into the gear of going, go, 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 go. Yeah. Well, is it weird getting back into that gear? I mean, y you've been really making the album for a while. You know, it's hard to go from zero to sixty. Um. Yeah. Who told that guy to like wear a cardigan the way that he's wearing? Like that. That the interviewer just like triggers me. Yeah, I've been so chill for the past. I mean, chill and not chill, but just like. I haven't had to do much and like yeah. do much for other people and, and get so it's like I'm just getting getting it back. Was there a part of you when you went into all of this that was like, you know, maybe like I don't need to do it because you really right. didn't need to do any of it. Yeah, I had my doubts. Yeah, I had my doubts to know like, am I ready for this? Am I ready to go back on the road and feel the pressure and feel like that's it? And uh, but I think I am, man. I don't think you can ever be ready. You just have to make a decision and say, yeah. hey, man, I'm gonna do this. I crush it. Well, let's get right into the album. Hey man, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna crush. And it. because it, it, very direct, very responding movement. So yeah, he's obviously a finisher, Templar, ISTP, INFJ. Still seems pretty concrete to me. That you, you made the point there, right? I'm not saying I wasn't meaning not make the album because the album is art. You're telling mm -hmm. a story. Mm -hmm. I listened to Sorry. It's incredible. Right, the We're looking for concrete plus pragmatic, or we're looking for affiliative and uh, and abstract. There's such a transition Uncle. from every one of your singles. Uncle. It's a part of you. Uncle. And sometimes sometimes <laughs> art comes with and this mm -hmm. is a part of the Yeah. You know? Yeah. So But actually, you know what? I've been learning to just make the best of it and have fun. Yeah. Right? And just enjoy it. Like if I'm coming here with just like oh, another interview I'm, I'm gonna it's like I'm just gonna come off that way and I'm gonna be thinking other stuff but yeah. if I just come like let me just enjoy myself and why you, not dude you give off good vibes everybody yeah. gives them back you know hell yeah oh, <laughs> that was oh. nice wow good vibes all around yes <laughs> this makes for an easier interview too it's easier to talk to it's like not weird and well that's uh, okay so now do I'm getting any, do you interview it's easier to talk to not weird concrete statement. people are just like it's like we, it's hard to talk to them mm -hmm. oh do you ever interview people to see that it's hard to talk to them? All the concrete? time. Okay, like I'm at 10,000 interviews, dude. I've done 10,000 in eight years, okay? And some of them, honestly, they suck because people come in and they're very close. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, you can prod, you can prod, you can prod, yeah. but if they have a wall up, mm -hmm. it's really a challenge. Like, it just, it, you can't really penetrate it because you can't. a conversation, if you go into something with a certain mindset, yep. it's or, hard. Or, yep, yep, yeah, yeah. Or, or yep. they have... Yeah, because like that's pretty pragmatic, and INFJ is not going to be affiliative like that. Insecure. You can tell that Justin just doesn't care. These or yeah. whatever it may be of like, oh, I, should I say this? Should I say this? But the point where I've kind of done enough to be like, I don't really care what I say at this point. I know who I am. And is it how? Yeah, it's like it's like a little mini clone of Marshall Mather, who is Eminem is an INFJ. How important is that moment in your life, right? To, when you have that realization. It's awesome. You uh, remember when you had that realization? Yeah, uh, you know what? On the air I did a few years ago, and it was when I was talking about my girlfriend. It was more not more about being open about yeah. every aspect of my life and yeah. who I am. Yeah. You know, and, and it came in a different way, you yeah. know? Because it, I remember it was a different attitude, a different mindset. 100%, 100%. You know, you're and comfortable. When you start, like, when you're in a weird place, talking about weird stuff, yeah. if that makes sense. Of course. Like, so when weird I snapped place. out of that weird place, weird stuff. like, this isn't the music that I really want to make, because my whole album was going that direction, like, just a weird vibe. Uh -huh. And it wasn't bad, the music was great, but it wasn't necessarily, like, where I'm at now. So I kind of restarted my whole project and just, like, started from scratch. And it went in a whole different direction once Skrillex got involved and once Where You Now came out. 
It became. It changed the game. Yeah. I really, I mean that. Yeah. And listening to Sorry validated my beliefs there. Thank you. Because it is so. It, when you release music, right? And, and and please hit me with this. This. Yeah, guys. Like, I don't really believe I have to make any other uh, statements at this point. He's not an INFJ. He Justin Bieber is categorically an ISTP. I mean, I'm kind of getting bored over the lack of abstract concepts here. He's just saying what is, what is, what is, what is, what is, what is the whole time. The same way he doesn't like just watch Marshall Mather like do a um, an interview. That guy just doesn't care, you know. It's like that like, melancholy thing. It's just he just doesn't care. No what ifs. Like he's a freaking ISTP. Come on, can we like not be in denial about this anymore? You know. What do you guys think of my really loud shirt, by the way? Should I stay with the loud shirts or should I go back to like, you know, wearing as much black as possible? I like wearing as much black as possible, to be honest. Um, yeah, time to move on. Yeah, there you guys go and doing another look and whatnot. But uh, yeah, okay, um, been at it at this, uh, been at this a long time uh, this evening. So let's, uh, Let's keep going. So, anyway, folks, uh, thank you all for coming tonight. I'm tired. I've been at this two and a half hours. I mean, I'm ready to put this uh, live stream to rest. So, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, remember that I've been doing these just once a month now, and I've got plenty more content uh, coming out in the future. I'm trying to release at least one lecture a week, and if I get more films, probably more than that. But I'm just kind of building a lot of stuff right now before I release even more content, uh, just doing a lot of business building. So content still would, should drop. Don't forget, make sure you're on our email list at csjoseph.life forward slash type grid. Get on our email list, guys, because uh, if you're not on our email list, then you're not gonna get the email only lectures, which is season 18. If you wanna see season 18, you need to be on our email list. If you guys unsubscribe from our list in any way, let's say you think I'm spamming you or something and you don't like that and you unsubscribe, you're not gonna get the season 18 episodes. And if you've missed any of the season 18 episodes, well, you're kind of SOL because we might not resend them out to you again. So if you guys wanna make sure you're not gonna miss season 18, you need to be on our email list. To get on our email list, go to csjoseph.life forward slash type grid. Or you go to ultimatemessagingformula.com and like pick up a copy of Ultimate Messaging Formula. It's a hundred bucks. I've had people tell me it's worth way more than a hundred bucks for a little tiny ebook. Um, and that ebook uh, has been changing lives, provides nice little worksheets and companion uh, information and visual aids to help you actually learn how to use the type grid to type people and yourself on your own. It's pretty obvious uh, what it is and uh, it just helps you learn how to talk to other people and potentially ego hack them in certain ways that you haven't been able to before. So check that out, ultimatemessagingformula.com. Stay on our email list, guys, so you get season 18. And let me tell you, season 18 content is going to be seriously, seriously worth it and very cerebral. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to have Cognitive Transitions of ENFPs about to drop very soon. And I believe the ISFJ season 19 episode, How to Be how to be the Best ISFJ, or also known as How to Cognitive Develop or and Become Enlightened as an ISFJ. So super important uh, with all of that as well. And uh, I hope that uh, you guys uh, uh, would really uh, come to a point where you're able to uh, value that. So, but yeah, I've just been busy. People are concerned that my content is slowing down. It's not necessarily slowing down. Uh, it's just that I need the next two months uh, to do it. But if you go to csjoseph.life forward slash calendar, we have our new schedule for March. And I think we're gonna keep the schedule indefinitely. Uh, gonna be filming lectures back to back to back to back as much as I can uh, at the beginning of the month, posting them all up. We'll have them all up for you guys, but uh, we'll have a regular release schedule. And in fact, like email reminders will go out to people too, so you guys like know what's up. So, um, but yeah. Um, and uh, rumor has it, pieces of the ultimate messaging formula um, may or may not be available in other ways. I mean, someone decided to leak the light, the, the type grid within the document publicly, uh, which was really a shame. 
so that's out there on the internet right now. Um, but uh, otherwise, guys, um, we have really no plans to release the new content in another form anytime soon. So it may be a while out there. But those of you out there who did get in on Ultimate Messaging Formula, uh, I have been told by so many people that it's like changing lives. I even had someone write me like a letter recently that it saved their marriage. I thought that was interesting. Uh, so, um, and, uh, and now uh, also the Ultimate Messaging Formula has literally taught their entire family how to type each other. And it's an excellent tool like to help you like psychoanalyze people. It's, it's excellent. So, and I'd like to give thanks to uh, Katrina Abionic for that. And don't forget also with Ultimate Messaging Formula, if for some reason you don't know much about the formula or what it does, or if you're for some reason not getting it, we are having a masterclass for Ultimate Messaging Formula this Saturday, but you had to have, you had to have already picked up the Ultimate Messaging Formula and then also like uh, the upsell that came with UMF, uh, you guys picked up the masterclass. And you all show up on the masterclass. It's like a little webinar. We're gonna be doing Q&A, also teaching you how to use uh, Ultimate Messaging Formula for your own personal success. And then uh, also you guys will be able to watch it later. You'll have like lifetime access to it, at least as long as CSJ is around as a company, that is, and you'll be able to access uh, the masterclass and take a look at that and uh, uh, really have it uh, create some real value for you from a sales, marketing, or business point of view, as well as maybe even uh, personal, interpersonal relationships. Who knows? But uh, that'll be there. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, thank you all, and uh, I really appreciate all of your, uh, all of your. Uh, don't become Don Cherry. I have no desire. Uh, I have no desire to do Don Cherry. And and by the way, like my wife is like the uh, ultimate shopper. She finds like all the deals and whatnot. Um, she's got like, like we've completely upgraded her wardrobe, which is awesome. And uh, just kind of, I'm extremely picky as an SI inferior as to what clothes I like want my wife to like wear. So I get really picky about it. And there's just some things I just don't like. So, but yeah, it's pretty awesome. But Anyway, I got to get going. Uh, glad you like my uh, loud uh, watermelon shirt. And I'm going to be changing up the studio in here. Going to get my paintings uh, figured out. And uh, blackboard this time. Going away from the whiteboard, doing the blackboard. And hopefully this is the last time you guys have to deal with the green screen. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, just waiting for my new microphone to show up. And I hope it actually like works. I really hope it works. So I, I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. That maybe that way I can actually film with my uh, iPhone instead of uh, other things. So that's kind of like where I'm trying to hope at that point. So anyway, guys, I got to get going. Railgun is a calling. And uh, thank you all for everything. Love you guys. And I'll see you guys next month. Uh, just so you guys know, um, see it's joseph.live forward slash calendar uh, to check out that thing in the future. So I'll talk to you guys all later. Have a good night.